se me ha acabado el presupuesto para dubstep y partículas. Así que aquí la tenéis, la intro de Nicro for Fun. El puto amo. Bienvenidos a la presentación de Diablo 4 Season 3, Campfire. Esta temporada empieza el martes 23 a las eh, 6 de la tarde, me parece. Y es una maravilla, tiene muy buena pinta. Vamos a ver cómo lo desarrollan en el Campfire. Esto de aquí es el tráiler, lo tenemos publicado desde el día 16. Tenéis vídeo en YouTube sobre todas las mecánicas. Y a ver qué tal. Yo voy a jugar un bárbaro. Si no habéis visto de qué va la season, os lo he puesto todo en Twitch, muy troceado. ¿Quién es el Lord final? ¿Quién Mal Malzas? ¿Qué es este tío que va a aparecer ahora? ¿Quién es, eh, ¿Cuál es la mecánica? Senescal, que es el, la arañita que va al lado nuestro, que es un autómata. ¿Quién son los enemigos? Los dos eventos que hay, las cámaras y los temblores. Está todo totalmente desarrollado. Sí, va a estar bárbaro. A ver qué nos cuentan. Season of the Contract has so much going on. New quest lines, new legendary items, new unique items, new mechanics, challenges and more. La season de los constructos. In the Season of the Contract, you learn of a wondrous place beneath the sands of Kajistan, filled with untold treasure. Nearly all who seek this treasure never return. Those that do return are haunted, or worse yet, possessed. La zona más indestructible es más en que Kajistán. Concretamente bajo los desiertos de Kajistán, las redes de cámaras. It houses the loom, a priceless apparatus built long ago by the brilliant mages Zoltan Kul and Ayujan of Chaldeum to shape the elements and build tools to serve humanity. While exploring the network, you rescue Ayujan, only to discover that the demon Malphus has taken over the loom to create its own private hell. Malphus is a servant of Diablo. He is unlike other demons we've encountered in Diablo 4. He's shapeless, manipulates others, takes on forms other than his own. He has possessed one of the Zoltan Kul's prized constructs. And you must work with Ayujan to explore the vaults, gain access to the loom, and defeat Malphus. This is Malphus. This introduces constructs. These elementally powered monsters costumes. were originally created los... by Ayujan and Zoltan to protect and maintain the loom. ¿Cómo lo llamaba? Unfortunately, Malphus has taken control of them and twisted them Estos to his life. They're powered by various different elements, elementos, giving them different abilities tipos. and strengths and weaknesses. You'll also find them, of course, in the vaults themselves, protecting the many treasures within. As players engage with the storyline of the Season of the Construct, they're going to come across a broken version of the Seneschal during the quest line. The Seneschal is a special construct that was built to command the other constructs based on Ayajan's and Zoltan's direction. Ayajan of Chaldeum repairs the Seneschal to follow your orders. Yeah. Tu compañero the Seneschal es construct is your no automata. It's a rebuilt construct that will accompany you throughout the season. Your siguiendo. construct's power will grow along with you. The Seneschal construct has many different abilities that can complement the player's build. It can deal damage, crowd control monsters, or even support you directly. He said, "Puedes meter daño, supervivencia, control de masas. Puedes adaptarlo para cada vez que sea." The key to customizing and empowering your constructs. Le puedes meter dos poderes y tres super a cada poder. You get governing stones from the season quest line. Esas son las dos habilidades. Governing stones from playing through the seasonal content. A governing stone is a core construct ability, while a tuning stone is a singular modification for any number. Correcto, hay 12 habilidades y 27 subs. Progressing through the season of the construct, and they're leveling up their special. Tiene muy buena pinta. Adding new abilities and improving them, they're going to find abilities that are going to deal damage to packs of monsters. Las habilidades las puedes aumentar de de nivel para que hagan más daño. Les puedes meter buffos. Puedes hacer que tengan múltiples tiles, que chaineen, que atraviesen. As they're progressing through the season. One cool ability is auto defense. Auto defense summons a magical barrier around your construct that shoots down enemy projectiles. Another cool ability that your construct has is focus fire. It is a channel of fire that contains multiple enemies. You can't even see the 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 enemies. You can't
use combinations of tuning stones to transform a seemingly simple skill into something truly crazy. Mirad esta mierda. Puedes hacer que una habilidad chaine enlace enemigos y de pronto él solo limpia todo el mapa. Concentration of deadly traps, where you can farm for the magic stones for your essential constructs. You can find the entrances in different zones of sanctuary. When the player enters a vault, they are met in a familiar area of sanctuary. Then the player teleports to the vault proper, encountering great challenges. Vaults Ese not es el only boss, have a new in them, but also new traps built for this claro, una de las cosas que tiene esta season que me parece super original es que aparte de los enemigos hay trampas en los mapas. Y si las trampas te golpean, eh, te bajan una, un recurso que vamos a tener que proteger que va a depender de cuánto lo protejas y los recursos finales. Con lo cual la estrategia de solo tanquear no es la mejor de todas. If you survive that, the traps will turn off and the treasure room is revealed. Que según cómo llegues al final, se abre la puerta y te da recompensas. Cuanto más te golpeen las trampas, más cargas pierdes. Special players can get by interacting with the statue of Zoltan Cool when they enter a vault. If they have a pearl of warding, ward woven chests are special chests players can interact with at the end of a vault. If they have enough stacks, Zoltan Cool will open more than one stack. If they have enough stacks, Zoltan Cool will open more than one stack. If they have enough stacks, Zoltan Cool will open more than one stack. Those have even better rewards. This season introduces our first stationary boss in Diablo 4. This is going to be a fight against this massive protective golem meant to watch over the vaults. The Malthus, once again, este mega golem es Malthus y es el boss de la season. Because it's stationary, it gives us the opportunity to include some of the season's new traps. Es totalmente estático, por cierto. Se queda se queda en el centro del mapa todo el rato. This presents a lot of new mechanics for the players to navigate and fight. The player is going to need to bring all of their skills and abilities to bear. As they try to destroy and fight off these Malthus-controlled constructs, they're also going to make good use of their own Seneschal. Make sure they remain upgraded in the fights to come. The Gauntlet is a new fixed-seed non-linear dungeon where players have a fixed amount of time to achieve high scores by proving their might. Any player who unlocks World Tier Four, Torment Mode. Can compete in the gauntlet. Vale, the gauntlet, the mode of competitive. You have to unlock the mode four to be able to enter. It's the rotation semanal. Unlike other dungeons, every time you and other players enter the gauntlet that week, it will be exactly the same. The mazmorra will be always the same every week. In the plan, during a week, static, 100%, same bits, same everything. Monsters within the gauntlet start at level 100. This is meant to test your fully leveled up in-game gear. The monsters within the gauntlet start at level 100. This is meant to test your fully leveled up in-game gear. Is highly replayable, enabling a broad set of player choices. Son totalmente rejugables y la idea es ver cómo de bien lo puedes hacer para competir. Leaderboards are a place for top players to compete with one another in the gauntlet. These were set each week when a new gauntlet appears. There are solo leaderboards for each class, as well as party leaderboards. Hay rankings de cada clase. Of course, there are a set of leaderboards just for hardcore players too. But some players may not be ready for that type of play. Hay ranking tuyo, de sí, son de centro. Each leaderboard has a ladder that you climb to reach it. Each rung of the ladder awards a seal that you can show off. And when you earn the seal of the worthy, you'll be ready for leaderboard competition. Can't wait to see you in sanctuary. Correcto. Los diez primeros del ladderboard van a ser congelados en la sala de los ancestros o algo así. Y los mil primeros me parece que es les van a dar una categoría que se llama así o algo así, básicamente como que eres más bien importante y te van a dar recompensas en base al rango que alcances. Si entras en el top mil o en X puntuación te van a dar cajas de recompensas. Welcome to another Diablo 4 developer update live stream. My name is Adam Fletcher. I am the community lead for the Diablo franchise, and of course, I'm joined by some special guests here today. Las perlas relucientes con las que se potencia la mazmorra se van a conseguir en el evento de superfedia llamado Temblores. I am the lead designer for season three, season of the Construct. Cool. And I'm Madeline James, and I'm one of our quest designers on Diablo Four. And what you guys probably don't realize is, or maybe you do, if you watch these streams often, you'll most definitely realize we're in a completely different set today. We're actually live from all. Si le veo yo creo que va a ser los templos arcanos. And we're doing this here. Que son los eventos de superficie con un montón de otros. And so now we have two different sets. We have one in Irvine and one in Albany, and we actually have another guest that will be joining us today. And it's a very familiar face to all our live streams. That's Mr. Adam Jackson. He is live from. The Irvine studio. Hi, Adam. Good to see you, and Hola, we'll be Adam. talking to you soon because we're going to be talking about uh, uh, balance and classes and everything. So we'll be joining uh, Adam here shortly. But we have a lot to talk about. Um, you know, a lot with season three. We announced it remember, this week, uh, with season of the construct. We've seen a lot of cool feedback and great feedback from uh, players 
uh, related to the trailer and everything that, that released out uh, earlier this week. Um, but we did want to talk a little bit, before we jump into Season 3 and, and those items, we do want to talk a little bit about, you know, the new year and obviously yep. going through the holiday and season no vamos a hablar del tema de, de uh, season al que hemos blood, venido uh, where players got vamos to a hablar del nuevo fight lord zier jump into different blood harvests and everything and it, what was awesome to see uh, with season of the blood was, you know or season of blood is that we ended up getting really great feedback from players yes. about how they enjoyed you know um, some of the aspects with it and you know just hearing that feedback has helped us a whole lot in terms of how we're going to build out Diablo 4, especially in future seasons. And one big thing that, you know, we introduced was the boss ladder, uh, with, you know, of course, Uber Duriel being part of it. Yep. Uh, and it was a, a good opportunity for players to kind of uh, target farm Uber Uniques, which was really great. Uh, and we got to see a lot of players actually obtain Uber Uniques this season. Uh, and I will say, like, you know, está hablando de qué tal ha ido la Season of Blood, de que en la Season of Blood metieron uh, nuevas some, formas some de we'll game, here, el farmeo de Uber, uh, farmeo de materiales uh, Uber, farmeo de Duriel. Y estaba diciendo un poco recapitulando. Habla luego de la mecánica de Endgame de Avatar Ophir, el material de Ophir. And we introduced right before the holidays for players to check out. Blizzcon, and, you know, I, I do want to give a huge shout out to the community because we got a lot of feedback about Avatar of Zier. En el Avatar of Zier quería dar las gracias a la comunidad, que hubo un montón de feedback. Luego se recalibró en base a los lloros de la comunidad. I will say that Avatar of Zier will not be present in Season 3, um, but... Que el Avatar of Zier, el Avatar of Zier, no va a estar durante la Season 3, pero va a ser un éxito. Les ha dado muchas ideas y tiene ideas para futuro que tienen que ver con esto. Y tiene ideas para futuro que tienen que ver con esto. Y tiene ideas para futuro que tienen que ver con esto. Y tiene ideas para futuro que tienen que ver con esto. Y tiene ideas para futuro que tienen que ver con esto. Y tiene ideas para futuro que tienen que ver con esto. Uh, and then we have Midwinter Blight, which was our first event, our first holiday event uh, in Diablo 4. También uh, fue el 12 de really, really cool, diciembre um, hasta el 3 o el 4 de enero fue el evento de Navidad. <laughs> <laughs> donde podías conseguir todos estos like cosméticos y demás, uh, que también les ha ido muy bien, han tenido mucho apoyo, mucho soporte. Our, our to feedback, this was our first, like, Era su primer evento de Navidad y ha habido mucho feedback. Era su primer evento de Navidad y ha habido mucho feedback. Era su primer evento de Navidad y ha habido mucho feedback. Era su primer evento de Navidad y ha habido mucho feedback. Uh, in the future, uh, and you know, based off of a lot of great mentirlo, feedback no we got, probé. you'll be seeing that feedback applied to some of these future events that we have coming forward. And of course, at the end of the year, we ended up going over kind of all the the big stats since uh, Diablo Four launched, de los and meses a ton del juego. of people have joined. Uh, Diablo ya lo he visto en Twitter. Uh, to, you know, to slay demons with Me us in the sanctuary, and a lot of people have died as well. Uh, and some of these stats, you know, they, these numbers have only grown uh, since yep. we posted these uh, uh, late last year. And of course, we had 37 million people died at the Butcher. Now more, for sure, uh, <laughs> since we ended up having that. We've had over a trillion monsters killed, which is absolutely crazy. Está muy bien, ¿eh? Son números uh, and, bastante you know, decentes, teniendo en cuenta las copias que vendieron. Significa que ha habido gente que ha jugado fuerte. A little bit more risky. Uh, and, Buscar and esta tabla. Play hardcore specifically. And our two most popular classes being the sword. Buscad esta tabla, pero en Diablo 3. Es flipante. There's a fan favorite. Has always been a fan favorite with D2 and yeah. D3. Uh, I actually, funny enough, I, I might actually be playing D uh, Necromancer here for Season 3. I don't know what you guys were planning on playing for Season 3, but... The team makes fun of me. I play Swork every single season. I mean, That's my favorite. Es una diseñadora de quest. Madeline es una quest designer. I've been meaning to play Druid, so I might do that. There Bought we go. the trend there. There we go. I did Druid y él es el in diseñador, one. el desarrollador jefe two. de la Season 3. Feeling Necromancer in Season 3, so I think that's going to be my choice there. But, uh, so el CM, la que hace las quests, y el del de equipo de desarrollo de la Season 3. From, uh, Diablo 4 since launch. But today, we are here to talk about Season 3, Season of the Construct. Uh, it's arriving January 23rd. Uh, Dan, do you want to... A las 6 de la tarde de un martes. Sure, no, no yeah. Entiendo. So, Season of the Construct. Um, is packed with a lot of content. And so um, there's a lot of things we're going to cover coming up. I mean, uh, the first thing we're going to talk about is our all-new quest line that delves beneath the sands of Kedjistan. Nothing good happens beneath the sands of Kedjistan, so that's where we're headed. <laughs> And um, in addition to that, uh, as you've seen from a lot of the, the promotional materials, Uh, we are now introducing a seasonal companion called the Seneschal Construct, and that is something este that es can el companion que nos va a seguir esta temporada. Really kind of en la sesión de los constructos de los. Joder, no uh, in addition to that, we have a couple of new repeatable activities. The first is the vaults, which is an all-new dungeon type. Y los automatas. And the second is the enemigos which is y an overworld activity. 
And last but surely not least, in terms of the Season 3 package, is the Gauntlet and Leaderboards. And those are coming pretty soon. Uh, but uh, we'll give you a bit of a tease ah, right now, I think. The Gauntlet, yeah. el modo so competitivo, no sale con la season. Va a salir dentro de unas pocas semanas. Most definitely the biggest season yet for Diablo Absolutely. 4, uh, with a lot of content. And as you mentioned, questline and story being the first thing that we wanted to dive into. Yeah. Madeline, I think this is a good opportunity yes. to talk to us Bien. a little bit. Madeline about, es la que ha desarrollado uh, la quest en que vamos a seguir line. con Absolutely. el automata. So as Dan mentioned, we have a new quest line for, for Season 3. In it, you are going to assist the mage Ayujan to purge the demon Malthus from the Zolt, uh, este es Zolt and Zolt and Cool. El mago um, que nos va a mandar Malthus a las has taken over the vaults, um, turned them into his own little kingdom, and has turned the hazards and the constructs inside of them um, against their makers. Um, I think a, a good question to start with is kind of why constructs. It's a little bit of a departure from from seasons uh, past. You know, season one dealt with malignancy, and um, season two dealt with vampires, both stemming from Lilith's influence. Um, but Sanctuary is such a big place, um, and so many different um, bueno, stories. La pregunta more, sería: where it present Las primeras dos mecánicas estaban relacionadas con. We've had, you know, thousands of years no. of. ¿Por qué? Um, Dice, porque San Antonio pasa muchas magic, cosas y a veces pasan cosas que no tienen que ver con la historia de Diablo 4. Um, Asumimos. We've spent a lot of time discussing as a team what we even wanted to do for, for season 3. Um, and the story team really fell in love with um, Mage Glands. We delved into. Um, a lot of Diablo lore, we delved into the Sin War books, we delved into the Roderick Vault, etc. Um, and th the Mage Clans, for people that don't know, were these ancient mage societies that really um, were expertise in certain, um, societies de magos como muy antiguas. And we love the Vigerai. Um, they're typically the bad guys, uh, <laughs> yep. typically delve into demonic magic, even though they're, they're not you know, traditionally evil per se. Que se suponía que eran um, como sociedades de magos malvados y demás, pero... Took, uh, machinery and their demonic magic and made these soldiers or these guards. Claro, um, que creaban trampas, que van a los avatares estos. No es técnicamente Vigerai, es parte del clan de Enead con Zolt y Cool. Pero su objetivo era tomar estas ideas de constructos y hacerlos their own and you know, do them in a different way. Que realmente los hicieron um, como los defensores de estas baúl, de yeah, estas cámaras, pero apareció el demonio you know, Malthas, creo que se ha hecho el demonio y los volvió a su favor. Los volvió en contra de estos magos. Definitely pun intended. Pun intended, yes. Zoltan played a part in the Diablo 3 story, and of course we saw him in Diablo Immortal as well. Yes, Zoltan was one of the original Haradrim. Good old Uncle Tyrael gave him the original Soul Stones. It's like, hey, I trust you, take care of them. Um, Zoltan went a little bit off script, and he's like, what if I made these better? And so he created his, his Dark Soul Stone, sí. um, which was his Kule own... Kule se lo justo de tirar él, y Kule creó su propia tecnología para detener a los demonios. It didn't go quite as he expected, and the rest of Faradim said, we don't really like what you're doing, you gotta get out. So they killed him. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Entonces, <laughs> Kule creó la piedra alma negra um, para tema de um, los demonios y tal. Los soldados se le rebelaron um, y lo echaron del grupo y lo mataron. They became business partners um, and eventually friends. And they shared this vision of if we can create our own version of constructs and um, create this alternate power source that's not using demonic magic, the loom, yep. um, they, these constructs can fight heaven and hell and humanity can flourish. Um, okay. Unfortunately, didn't go as expected. It, they couldn't claro. just get. They could, Pero todo es culé para intentar realmente usar esos like, poderes a su favor. Creó el telar. Los constructos, creó los los bichos estos. No, I was esto. like, no, I really, we, we have something here. Pero no salió going. exactamente como um, pensaba. And unfortunately, that created a rift in their friendship, and that rift allowed for the demon Malthus to infiltrate their work. Um, Malthus is a demon that you're going to. Uh, encounter in the quest line and then fight an uber version of him later in the season. Ah, um, he's y que Malthus, el boss final de la quest line, demon. también va a tener una uber version en Endgame. Big, scary guy with Nuevo horns. boss de Endgame. Um, like I said before, we took inspiration from Sin War and they have a lot of different types of demons. They have different abilities, um, different shapes. One of them is like this stone liquid mouse, uh, mass yeah. with a mouth on top. And so the original Malthus... Um, was like this red mist, and that allowed him to kind of sneak into sneak into corners that he wasn't supposed to. Dice que el mazo um, original es una especie de niebla roja que se esconde en las esquinas, en las sombras. But he's very unimportant in the hierarchy of hell, and that kind of bothers him. 
Um, we do joked around on the team that he, he had a desk job in hell. Um, <laughs> so when he took, found the opportunity to sneak in the sanctuary and to corrupt the vaults, he's like, this is my, this is my time to shine. This is my kingdom. Yeah. I'm going to rule it. Um, and he did that successfully for many, many years. And he might have gotten away with it forever, except he was a little bit too prideful. He's like, yeah. I'd like to sneak out of and, yeah. and leave the vaults. Yeah, he's not satisfied with the vaults. He now mm -hmm. wants to start trying to tank yes. to take over sanctuary itself. Sí. And that's where the plan is. De hecho, yeah. él estaba como dominando so las baulas, uh, hecho que los automatas estuvieran de su, pa de su uh, parte, el talmazas, uh, las trampas y tal, pero crea terremotos um, para que ataquen en la superficie. Malthus's influence has is seeped in. Um, villagers and demons don't typically go well. Y acaba de arrancarse el puto brazo. Their insurance rates. Um, but they hire you and they're like, hey, something's going on, something up north, please figure it out for us. Um, and so you find the, the first Eso es un um, vault and you, you delve into it to try and get a sense of what's going on. And these are where you're going to start um, uh, seeing the first hostile constructs that Malthus has corrupted. And find your own construct. Um, you start finding pieces of it. You're going to keep traveling sí, encuentras tu propio constructo, que empiezas a encontrar piezas de él, empiezas a encontrar diferentes componentes y construyes tu propio constructo. Under Malthus's influence, you eventually free him. He's like, "Thank you so much. I don't even know what's going on, but let's figure this out together." And he fixes the the seneschal construct for you. He's like, "You're probably going to need this." Dice que cuando liberas de la influencia de Malthus a este tío, a Malthan o Malazar o como se llame. Yeah, and here we're seeing like part of the crossing that they're obviously building up and kind of creating your, your own central yeah. construct, yeah. I think we have footage of, of the Malthus fight as well. Oh yeah, we can jump into that. So Malthus is our first stationary boss. Um, he uses the environment, the, the hazards in the room. Dice que Malthus is a boss totalmente estacionario que usa el entorno. Um, there are different um, elements in the, in the boss fight that are going to periodically switch. Que hay varios um, elementos durante like la pelea que vamos a tener que utilizar. You know, this red mist, but for this fight he is um, possessed the, the largest construct he could find, the guardian, um, to... Que tiene sus mecánicas, him. tiene... Um, hay que hacerle and cosas para detenerlo y demás. Background. Yeah. So, you know, uh, imagine then Malthus is pretty much become like the embodiment it, it's it's the vault itself and the vault is now coming alive to, yeah. to try and kill you dice que Malthus lo tenéis que entender no como un ser en plan un boss sino que él es la propia baú la propia cámara es como si la cámara se volviera viva y te atacara y Malthus es toda la cámara todos los bichos todo seasonal town the gate hall um this is kind of the gate world gateway between the the vaults and the upper world Um, you're going to go through it in the quest line, and then it is going to turn into a town for you. To Dice use. que va a aparecer um, esta especie de a waypoint, so easy travel. Sala de um, most of the the vendors that you know and love. Que um, es un intermediario entre la superficie y las baúl. Actually, construct vendors that Ayujan has fixed for you. Y aquí tenemos todos los NPCs que nos hagan falta. Um, and here you're going to be accessing um, the vaults. You can also access them in the overworld if you choose so. So it should be a really convenient. Y estas son las entradas a las diferentes baúl. And turn into your your main hub for the season. Yeah, we we expect a lot of players will be hanging out here yes. in, in the, the gate hall since all your vendors will be here, it'll be easy access to the vaults and everything, so mm. uh, kind of the new hub que specifically como for Season base. 3. Yep. So, yeah, Very sounds excited. really cool. Yeah, really excited for the, the, the quest line and story for, for Season 3. Obviously, we talked about Seneschal Constructs and how that's actually going to be um, a, a big part of the storyline. People have been talking about it all this week with you know, seeing the footage of like, wow, it looks like we have these little companions with us now yep, yep. Uh, for season three. So, uh, Dan, can you talk us a little bit about, you know, what Seneschal Construct yeah, will be for players? Yeah, so the Seneschal Construct is vale. a, a el seasonal Seneschal, companion. El constructo, el, and the seasonal companion is kind of the embodiment of your power chase for the el season. Automata. So every season we try to develop a new type of power chase and, you know, Cada power is really una important herramienta de power to our de Power Chase. En la Season 1 fueron los corazones, y de los malignos, en la Season 2 fueron los poderes de sangre, en la Season 3 nuestro Power Creep va a ser Senescal, el autómata. Vamos a buscar una forma de darte ese poder que no hayas visto antes. Ahora, el Seneschal es este pequeño construct, tal vez no tan pequeño, pero te sigue por ahí, y tiene diferentes skills y habilidades. And I will note. Ah, I yes. will note. You can <laughs> pet your construct, your your central construct, which yes. is you, you. You have to be able to pet it. So yes, you absolutely can. important. Yeah. And so, um, Gente, you can no have son presentadores, son trabajadores. Os han puesto los desarrolladores. 
no tienen por qué ser buenos comunicadores. Esta gente tiene que hacer su trabajo desarrollando la situación. El comunicador aquí es Terraza. Los semi-precious stones que puedes encontrar durante tus aventuras en la temporada 3. Uh, they drop in a lot of those repeatable activities I mentioned, which we'll cover soon. And um, there's lots of different types. I think there's about 12 that you can slot in. Hay 12 tipos de skill y 27 tipos de support. Por lo atropearán durante la historia. Uh, because, I mean, Al final okay, de las bouts, en cámaras cool. ocultas dentro de las bouts, wrong, en los terremotos en superficie, las puedes craftear. Allow players really to modify those skills however they saw fit. And so we've also developed. 27 different tuning stones, another type of stone, hmm. that you can slot in then to modify that skill. And so you've got those two governing stones, and then each governing stone has three different tuning stones that can modify it and just create really wild combinations of powers that allow players to experiment how they see fit. Vale. Um, and so kind of with support. that breadth of powers then, you've got a lot of different options for being able to um, kind of round out your build and create new types of ways to kill demons. Awesome. So. That's very cool. It sounds sí, te really cool. Yeah. I, I think, think we, we might actually have uh, some I think examples we do. and footage yeah. of like, you know, what some of these yeah, would be. Yeah, so let me tell you what's going on here. Um, so we brought up our construct menu. And this is in the inventory UI. But it's its own separate UI, so you know your construct is not going to take up your your traditional inventory space. And Dice que el uh, this construct has two governing stones equipped no right now. Espacio. One is called Focus Fire, which was that beam of fire dos. that was coming out. The other one is called Lightning Bolt. Puedes and hacerlo you can tirar un rayo de bolts. fuego que se transmite. Like I said, two skills. Un disparo not de rayo. Too bad. You're killing some folks here. Um, but we want to we want to amp things up a bit. So, in addition to being able just to get stones as drops from activities, you can also craft stones. And so we've gone to, to our gate hall here, and we're crafting a new uh, stone. We're going to see what we get. In this case, it's a pummel stone, a governing stone. I already have that skill, so um, it's just going to count towards XP, towards leveling up pummel. Uh, and I'm going to kit out my uh, uh, Seneschal La gema suben de nivel, ponía rango so eh, 4 y tal. La cosa and es que I think the first thing we're going to uh, add is voluminous support. A uh, fancy way of saying that it's going to increase the area of effect for your attack. Estas dos debajo no las hemos visto. Uh, Una de las más cuatro habilidades, la otra no lo sé. Now, even though Focus Fire is a fire attack, Electrocution is going to add some lightning damage to it. And it's also going to add a little bit of chance of stun. And so now we're sí, dipping sí, our sí, toes into this crowd control. And then finally, uh, we're going to add arcing support. And arcing support's really cool. Está el nivel de la gema, so nivel 2, nivel 3, nivel 7, nivel 8. La rareza de la And gema. And so now let's see what that power is going to look like when we bring los it back up. Los los rangos. Y si crafteas una gema All y ya right. la tienes, so se now, consume y se convierte en experiencia para subir la gema. You can see that focus is chaining amongst enemies. You can see that some of them are getting stunned, little electricity around them. And it had a bigger area of effect. Similarly, if we were to apply some of these to the support, uh, uh, let's say we gave a multi shot in that arcing support. Para que now we can just blast through enemies. Um, so yeah, so yeah. It's so it got kinda, a lot of options. We're, we're, yeah, so we're kind of seeing some examples of what players can potentially do with their their Seneschal yep. constructs and actually. Um, Uh, make adjustments and, and modify them to kind of suit your puede ser DPS, I think a big support, question is like, can puede you coger el agro, add, um, uh, you know, maybe some puede uh, darte buffos, status effects or things yes. like that? Like, can you potentially uh, add in a tuning stone that may make enemies like vulnerable for instance? Yes, absolutely. So, again, we wanted puedes to give all of you a lot of different options to play with. We want this to be a toy that you can experiment o sea, with. Que que and so that, that means that, que nos that you know, some of the examples we showed were more damage dealing, where the, the Seneschal is doing the damage, but then we also want to give players the ability to just kind of sell, you know, enemies for you to go in and, you know, uh, land the killing donde, blow. Ah, so, una cosa um, there are a lot Ulea. of different support stones that Puede can make things vulnerable, bleed things, monje Diablo 3. electrocute them. Chill them. I que te mean, los puede chilear, te los puede electrocutar, te los puede congelar, te los puede aturdir, te los puede juntar. So your, your possibilities are, are, are massive with yes. what you can do with your, your Seneschal. And you know, one Seneschal thing, this is, is actually something that um, Sean White, who was in the video, our, yep. our, uh, our, our uh, Dev Insights video before es el the actual start of the stream, de la, de uh, pointed out yesterday on, on social media to, to 
uh, players that were asking a little bit more or for more clarity on some some items. But uh, the Seneschal construct actually does scale one to one with like specific um, like secondary type of stats or even yes. or, or uh, yeah. things that are associated with your your actual character. So yeah. things like attack rating or uh, crit chance, yep. for instance. Yeah, it was very important for the Seneschal to feel as if it was an extension of you if you wanted to be that. Also, we really didn't want to get you know a Seneschal that was just outclassed when you got the level 100 because yeah. then yeah. where's the fun, yeah. right? So uh, yes, absolutely, the Seneschal will become more powerful as you become more powerful. Awesome. Yeah, correct. Yeah, so El bicho se va a más poderoso contigo, igual que huge role, uh, and with the construct and you now being able to customize and uh, change puedes things up for eh, how you want to play, al avatar este al new challenges and, uh, al automata, that are lo puedes personalizar with, uh, totalmente a tu uh, gusto, season, lo puedes levear, lo puedes upgradear. And one of them is vaults, uh, yep. which I know we do want to yep. dive a little bit more into. Y entonces tiene varias uh, formas de hacerlo más completo um, so, y demás. Yeah, Uno de ellos es las vaults, las sure. cámaras. Sure, vaults are a new dungeon for this season and we have four types of, of vaults. Uh, like I said before, de Mouth. they are this extension of Malthus. Um, and because of that, he has turned the hazards inside of them into um, enemies in and of themselves. We wanted to explore the fantasy of a environment that was hostile and it was ready to kill you often. And uh, so they're filled with hazards. Um, that Mejorado, no, es un compañero de Diablo 3 empeorado. El compañero de Diablo 3 tiene entre 4 y 8 habilidades. Este solo tiene 2. Out of the walls and with our construct enemies. I think we have some some footage of the the vaults as well yeah. to kind Esto of walk through it. Vault. Um, so yeah, constructs in them per usual. Um, these because they're so um, hostile and dangerous, we wanted them to have a good. Um, be lucrative and be risk reward. Una cosa um, que puede hacer so el constructor, por cierto, es provocar quemadura para liberar una pasiva del un encantamiento like del mago. También um, hay trampas. Our dungeon designers, you know, typically with the dungeon experience, you know, you get a pop-up and you're like, okay, it's telling me to kill all the enemies, I know what to do. Um, the dungeon designers wanted to explore a little bit of a, I'm not sure what I'm going to do. Dicen que no querían basarse en algo tan tonto como matar todos los bichos en la correr, sino que querían complicar un poquito más. Entonces han puesto cajas con trampas, han puesto lo que estáis viendo. Han puesto lo que estáis viendo. Lo han hecho un poquito más complicado. Lo han hecho un poquito más complicado. Que tengas que ver el mapa y hacerle caso. Aparte de haber bichos para matar. Sí, pero seamos realistas. ¿Cuántos no vamos a tanquear las trampas al segundo día? Tons of traps here. Yes. There, I know that there's uh, some gameplay associated with like kind of uh, avoiding them and rewards associated with those as yes, well. Yes, absolutely. So um, certainly Madeline has outlined a lot of the risks associated with vaults. I mean, those hazards are going to be pretty unforgiving. Uh, but if we're putting a lot of risks in front of you guys, uh, we want to make sure there's a lot of rewards. Sí, los personajes con movilidad so así son de mucha ventaja. With, like, los rogues estas así son van a estar fuertes por the, la ventaja uh, que les supone. Vaults have been souped up, so they're you know more rewarding. Al menos yo lo veo así. Chests you'd find in other dungeons, but there's another mechanic at play too. Por cierto, esta es una de las mecánicas de media de media mazmorra. So Te dejan encerrar una sala con trampas y tienes que pelear mientras estás esquivando las trampas. Uh, you can find the statue of Zoltan Kuhl because, of course, Zoltan Kuhl. He has to have a statue. He's got to have a statue in every vault. I mean, that's just <laughs> how he rolls, right? El tema so, de las trampas no es tanto um, que hagan daño. If que you're able to find es que a, a special, uh, it's called a pearl de cuántas warning. trampas te hayas comido. You si te comen muchas trampas, pierdes una cosa que es no sé qué de. The statue de is going to grant you Zoltan's warning. Que te penaliza. Uh, this is a buff. It doesn't really help your combat too much, but what it does. Is it gives you additional rewards, and you can see right there. There's uh, kind of that glowing one to the side with the icon. That is a ward woven chest that uh, contains extra rewards if you're able to keep that buff. And so, as you get better and better at the vaults, um, you're going to start basically challenging yourself. Con las pelas de resguardo vamos a poder potenciar las cámaras y vamos a tener algo llamado resguardo de Zoltun. El resguardo de, de, de Zoltun es un buff. So si nos hacen daño really por pillamos trampas, sure se penaliza. In addition to fighting the enemies in order to get the highest payout. Dice que tienes que intentar la medida lo posible que no te golpee las trampas. Si te golpea las trampas, bajará la calidad de tu resguardo de Zoltun y perderás recompensas. Si llegas con toda la 
eh, recompensa de resguardo de salto y te dan recompensa adicional. You can have multiple stacks of buffs, so you, you know, Pearl, one pearl is, I believe, three stacks. Ahora tiene más sentido lo de la WSL. Y si quieres ir a grindar la actividad de actividad para obtener las pearls, like, okay, I have a bunch of stacks, tarde, no? I have a no really dicho. good chance. Um, and if you don't make it and you no stacks left, there were two chests at the end, you still always get a, a, a loot, um, but the super great loot it comes from Solon's Warding. Yep. Got it. So yeah, so there there are opportunities for players to actually get ver, multiple chests. Si te lo pasas, uh, vas a llevarte tu recompensa. Pero si quieres un super loot, si quieres una mejor recompensa, uh, usa la puta armada que está para eso. If you know yes. you're planning on mm -hmm. playing a little bit more yeah. sloppy, if you really like that. really want to brute force your way through, you can, but you've got to invest a little more time. Got it. No, yeah. that makes sense. That's that's great to know. And like, I guess with uh, the pearls and the overworld activity, can, uh, I know that has like. Uh, To, to earn those types of buffs, like how, how do players actually end up? Right, so uh, that's our second repeatable activity that I'd mention, which is the arcane tremors. A ver, la segunda so mecánica de temporada, la segunda is, cosa para hacer, uh, son los terremotos arcanos. That's really localized around the entrances of the vault. So, Están todos localizados we alrededor de las entradas de las vaults. Have become grander now that he controls all the vaults, and so Están all the constructs are starting to spill out in the sanctuary and peaks. cause trouble. Additionally, uh, some new types of hazards have unearthed and are starting en to appear Hawaii, around Están the vaults. And so it's your job to every so often go in and beat back, you know, all these uh, uh, construct invasions or incursions. Essentially, estos son como brechas uh, que se han abierto en el subsuelo por las que salen and los so constructos y es tu trabajo llegar y cerrarlas. We can, uh, Queue up some uh, video for that too. And so uh, here uh, you've arrived and you see basically a roaming band. Tienes que of matar a su heraldo, que es su. Como you know, su obviously, voz. it's your job to go in and uh, kill them and send them back to where they came from. But, Cuando matas al um, boss, a su heraldo, te dan all, monedas uh, con las cuales puedes uh, what you're looking to recibir recompensa. To really advance y the activity cerrado. is look for these cores that you can use uh, to draw out Malfus's most powerful lieutenants. El And so you're getting a core here de lobo de tormenta de rayo tiene que estar rotísimo esta sesión. And you've got to make sure to not get hit by that. And if you collect enough cores, you're able to deposit them in a brazier, which you can see on screen here glowing. And the brazier is a signal that you are now challenging uh, one of the heralds of Malfus. And the herald Correcto. of Malfus, you see, Dicen que tienes que right farmear esa especie como de pinchos uh, que hemos visto. Si consigues suficiente, los entregas aquí. Will, you know, y esto va a hacer que aparezca una serie de enemigos, incluido un heraldo de Malfus. Cool si vences al heraldo de Malfus y a los élites que lo acompañan, te van a dar los fragmentos para fabricar tus propias piedras, tanto de skill como de skill. Esto sería el boss final de esa mecánica. Y ahí tienen los fragmentos. Feedback that we've gotten from from the community as well. Even with season uh, season of blood, there was blood harvest, which were overworld activities, and now there's kind of activities everywhere. There there's and they all have different various rewards for the player, whether that's vaults, whether that's doing uh, some of the 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 um, the activities on uh, on the overworld for the season. You have opportunities of actually being able to get rewards kind of all over the place. Yeah, our yeah. intention is for season one, you kind of stayed in tunnels, and yeah. then season two, you kind of stayed in the overworld most of the time. We didn't want to make the players feel like they're stuck and they can only stay in one place. In this Dice que so la season one era para estar dentro de los dungeons, túneles de los malignos, la season dos era para estar en la superficie con el tema de la marea de sangre, y que la season tres es para darte la oportunidad de que tú elijas dónde quieres yeah. estar. O te yeah, metes and dentro de la mecánica uh, o mundeas, pero darte la flexibilidad que tú elijas. Nightmare variations of that, yes. Uh, yes. and that's something that. Y las vaults tienen variantes de nightmare. To just going through vaults as well. So. Yeah. No puedes, yeah, the vaults puedes are sencillamente ir a la vault. Fully dungeons. Pero cuando llegas a dificultad pesadilla, so como son dungeons, puedes hacer escapes. And made nightmare versions of all of these dungeons. Y hay una versión pesadilla, como con sigilos, para entrar al, al vault potencial a la cámara. But they also have a lot more rewards. So those those chests we had talked about before, the ward woven chests. Uh, you actually get more of those as you advance in the nightmare system. So then your vault runs become even more and more rewarding. In that Dice que cuando haces yeah, un susurro, like, eh, like cuando tú has completado right. X so, número de pesadillas, uh, el susurro te da the, uh, los sigilos de nivel más alto. System, pues esto funciona igual. A way uh, that the game can now award unique seasonal sigils, and in this case they're called vault sigils. 
So did Dice haber unos sigilos you know, únicos really que se llaman Vault Sigils vault play, y que lo puede conseguir. Uh, you can earn the vault sigils and now you can target farm the vaults instead Correcto. of leaving it up to random chance. Very y que puedes cool. hacer eso, awesome. puedes entrar a las vault potenciadas con esos sigilos de vault. Uber Dungeon. <laughs> uh, it's kind of a it's Y eso lo que hace es crear Uber Dungeons. It's the best uh, features of all the other vaults put into one and that is where Malthus lives. And so you will be Questline, you'll defeat him, and then Uber version of him. Dice que cuando lo venzas yeah. en la Questline so a Malthus bien, Malthus, pero que si luego uh, quieres pelear con su versión Uber, Uber tendrás que hacer estas Uber cámaras y recor and, um, recoger los materiales necesarios para crear la Uber cámara que lo tiene todo, incluido Malthus. La de cargar gracias por el Prime. Awesome. So yeah, way way more additional content in in this season, um, and we have uh, a lot of different very ways of being able to play and, and take your character. You can do it uh, activities on the overworld. Uh, you can actually use those activities to help you out in the vaults. Uh, you can do nightmare variations of the vaults. We have. Uber vaults now, or with, Dice que tenemos vaults, Uber vaults, eventos de mundo uh, combinables uh, con los with, eventos que ya existían, you know, a nuevo boss de endgame, que hay mucha mandanga. Well. And this is just a little bit of, of what we have for season three. La figura with, de tirada vale mil cien pavos. Constructs which will be around with you all the time, and with that we <laughs> of course have one additional component yes, to season more. three, that's and, right. and that's with the gauntlet and leaderboard. And I, I, you know, I will caveat like I know we mentioned this in the blog earlier this week. So the gauntlet and the leaderboard are actually not going to launch at the start of this season. Um, and that's really because, you know, we, we want players to actually go through the season and actually uh, grow and learn the season with their character before we actually launch the leaderboards. So uh, we will have uh, information on when we actually do launch uh, Gauntlet Dice leaderboards. Dice que no van a uh, really ponernos soon, ni el Gauntlet ni el Leatherboard uh, por ahora, Dan, know, que ni siquiera nos van a dar la información del Gauntlet y el Leatherboard por ahora, are, que ya si eso, cuando a ellos se les ocurra, nos darán la información, y yeah. ya si eso, so, todavía después, nos lo sacarán. Of what the gauntlet and the trials leaderboards are going to be, and so we can go in a bit more depth here, um, and hopefully start to answer some of your questions. Um, so the gauntlet is another new dungeon type. Uh, the gauntlet, que gauntlet es un nuevo tipo de dungeon que nos va a contestar algunas dudas. With the overall leaderboard feature in World Tier Four. And, que hay que llegar a mundo 4 um, para poder entrar. That means that it, it's targeting more of your your end game players at this point. Folks who have really decided on a build, they're starting to really round it out. It's become more powerful, and now they want to prove their might, uh, not just to themselves, but you know, obviously to show off and have uh, bragging rights. So, um, the gauntlet itself, uh, new type of dungeon, is kind of based around three different principles. Uh, the first is that it is fixed seed. The second is that it is non-linear. And thirdly, like I said, it's there to prove your might. And so I'm gonna Dice que de Gaulle tiene tres bit. características. Um, la mazmorra es estática. Really la mazmorra no es lineal y tienes que demostrar tu poder. Possible for everyone. everyone gets the same gauntlet every week. Todo el mundo and recibe so la misma mazmorra cada semana. For, Pero tú know, no la enfrentas con la misma build. No la lleva like igual that. un tío que tiene una build de nivel 100 um, con todo really el equipo perfecto que tú que llegas point. con nivel 70 and como sea. Kind of to do. Con lo cual, para competir, primero tienes que prepararte un personaje de puta madre y luego vas a competir contra gente de tu misma clase. Frankie, gracias por el Prime. Non-linear is really all about how the dungeon is laid out. It is not a dungeon where you travel from the beginning to the end. It's not about trying to get to the end as No se trata de una dungeon donde intentas llegar al final, no es eso. Es sandbox, es una caja. And so uh, the layout uh, basically allows you to develop all manner of strategies. Entonces, I mean, planteate la estrategia como te la gana, tienes 10 minutos. Métete y tira por la izquierda, por la derecha, por arriba, mata élites, avanza, lo que tú consideres. Not even arguments. Sometimes people just kind of say, what was the best path you took? Oh, I think I can do better than that. And so a lot of it is trying to figure out your way through the dungeon each week. Habrá gente que diga, esta es la mejor puntuación que se puede conseguir con esta ruta. Venga, voy a intentar superarte. It's about killing enemies and gathering what we're calling proofs of might and then trying to get the highest score possible. Claro, pero so claro, si tú sacas una estrategia fast, basada en su helps, ruta, a lo mejor tú tienes que hacer lo mejor. How effective and efficient are you at combat? Cómo efectivo y eficiente eres tú matando bichos en este mapa. And so at the end of a gauntlet, you're going to get uh, a score 
And uh, you're going to say, okay, um, can I do better than that? And we're going to say, y que well, tú mismo vas a recibir you know, una puntuación cuando lo hagas y dirás, vale, hit, puedo mejorarlo. Really, you're going to be shooting for those ya ver cómo se te ocurren yeah. estrategias, um, ideas y demás para mejorarlo y competir. Yeah. And I think we've got a little bit of video to help with that. So, here's the gauntlet right here. Y esto es un ejemplo um, de gauntlet. Nivel it, 123. For all intents and purposes, looks like a normal dungeon. Te parece una dungeon normal, pero no lo es. Tienes 8 minutos. We're gonna throw a dungeon Empiezas boss con un boss. Right at the start. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I, I will note, like, I know we're mentioning level 100. Technically, you can do yes. gauntlet before level 100. It's just more, probably more efficient to do it yeah. at level 100, just because yeah. it is an end game activity that, I mean, and it'll be challenging. I mean, if you think you're ready to tackle the gauntlet below level 100, by all means, it's just, it's not a ver, that way. <laughs> la um, mazmorra so se here, desbloquea uh, cuando llegas a Tormento 4. You know, pero Lord. And Vas a competir contra powerful, gente que puede ser nivel 100, con lo cual um, ellos te recomiendan no jugar antes de nivel 100. Case, Pero no jugar antes de nivel 100 es, es una recomendación, todo lo que te dé la gana. Loot, drops, uh, Las zonas van a tener esto, and mucho nivel. Y eso puede ser usado como un power-up para aumentar tu poder dentro del gauntlet. Y hay otros tipos de nuevos shrines dentro del gauntlet también. Hemos hecho previamente aquí un pilar de probación. Hay nuevos pilares, uh, pilares uh, uh, dentro de esto, está el pilar of de la prueba, proving, que es este que ha tocado y han salido varios élites. Pueden revivir, por ejemplo, al boss. So we've got the pillar of proving, we've got the pillar of glory, which is a way to basically get a multiplier on your score. And we've even Tienes got chests scattered all throughout the dungeon puntuación. that you can earn keys for. And you see keys up in the corner on the HUD there. And those keys give you even additional score. So a lot of the, the strategy of a gauntlet is, you know, as a solo player at least, trying to find the most optimal path through it and use that as a way to, you know, pues take your sí. really cool build and get the highest score possible. And, you know, something we saw in the footage, obviously the first thing we ran into was a boss, like yep. a Tomb Lord right there. Um, and so you could technically take that Tomb Lord yes. further into the dungeon yeah. if you want to. Yeah. You're, not, you're not stuck in the room. Yeah, you, yeah. You, you, you're not, you're not no está bloqueado en la sala. Te puedes llevar al boss e ignorarlo y avanzar right y que su estrategia consiste en no matar a un puto boss, en avanzar y matar a otros bichos. Exactly, and so that's the thing, I think, with, with gauntlets. Like you, we're o al revés, tu estrategia puede basarse solo en matar elites y bosses. And these leaderboards will be weekly. We're going to see players kind of create different combinations of what What's the best way of optimizing for the best score possible? Um, you know, taking advantage of the shrines, taking advantage of the chests, taking advantage of like, should I drag a bunch of enemies over here just because I know I'll have a shrine yeah. ready and stuff claro. like that? So it's going to actually. Y si really no hay que memorizar see, cómo está el mapa, a lo mejor se consiste en hacer una buena pool, coger el agro de los bichos, pillar un pilón y igual sortearlos yes, todos. Well. Yeah, o the, consiste the, uh, en llegar a cierta zona y dejar todos los pilones para el boss o arrastrar al boss. Que al final tienes que desarrollar tu propia estrategia. Y dicen que las puntuaciones de las parties esperan que sean realmente ridículas porque pueden dividirse y que cada uno coja una estrategia y se dividan en cuatro y multipliquen por doce las puntuaciones. Que alguna de las pruebas que han hecho, por ejemplo, acabamos de ver a un tío que en 5 minutos ha hecho 10.000 puntos. En las pruebas que han hecho hay gente que ha sacado 154.000 puntos. Cada clase tiene un solo. Y eso fue muy importante para nosotros porque estábamos hablando de ese componente de fairness que queremos. Uh, to make sure that you know the competition is a level playing field, we understand that you know a, a ball lightning sork, for example, uh, probably shouldn't be compared to you know a rogue or something like that. Dice, a ver, and hay un so, problema y es que entendemos uh, que no puedes comparar uh, un mago ball lightning con un rogue. Entonces, por eso cada clase va a tener su propia competición. Each of the different party sizes, because obviously a four-person party probably is going to be able to cover more ground than yep. a two-person party. Que no podemos comparar el grupo con las parejas, con los tres. Te puedo dejar que compares algunas cosas, pero hay otras que no tiene sentido comprar. No te puedo comprar la puntuación de un single player con un ranking de cuatro. Bueno, están compitiendo en modo hardcore, deberían tener su propio ladder. Exactamente, exactamente. Y también tenemos también filtros y leaderboards for the different platforms. Yeah. Correcto. So you can actually y a la hora de ver el ladder, a la hora de ver el ranking, hay filtros. Filtros de, 
clase, de amigos, de plataformas, solo PC, solo consola. Pero recuerdo que Gauntlet no va a salir a corto plazo. Y eso se rolled up en un leaderboard global. Leaderboard as well. And all of those leaderboards we mentioned, you are also able to uh, filter uh, by friend and by clan if you want to be able just to see Puedes hacer un ranking de clan, un ranking de amigos, un ranking de continente, de lo que te dé la gana, de plataforma. Catered and customized to like allow players to actually really get into like almost like a granular type of uh, look of how they may compete against you know just maybe everyone or maybe just everyone on Xbox or maybe yep. just your friends or maybe just people in your clan, which is really cool to see. Um, and of course, with leaderboards and you know t tackling leaderboards, as you mentioned, it is a separate dungeon. Uh, there are kind of rewards associated with leaderboards. That's as well. right. Recompensas. So, ¿Cómo funciona el tema de las recompensas? Be straight up here, though. The the ultimate. <laughs> <laughs> the ultimate reward of a leaderboard is glory and exactly. bragging rights. Exactly. And so, you know, only the top 1,000 players during a week are going to be able to get on the leaderboards. And um, solo los primeros mil jugadores van a estar en el leaderboard. But we got to do a little bit better than that. And so, not only do we have the weekly leaderboards, we have the Hall of the Ancients. Which is the top y para los primeros 10 de cada clase, de cada ladder, se van a quedar guardados Now, en plan registro para que puedas decir, yo estoy ahí. So de momento es una competición de ego. ¿Y qué más a mí si no me interesa nada? Y no va a ser una competición de ego. Así que siempre tienes los derechos de bragging si quieres mostrar a otras personas. Incluso si vuelves en una temporada de un año de la temporada, puedes siempre decir, ¡Cuidado, sé lo que estoy haciendo! Pero tenemos algunos rewards también. Tenemos algunos premios de cosméticos para las personas que tal vez no hagan el Hall of the Ancients, pero que hagan otro nivel en los leaderboards. Y también hemos introducido otro tipo de reward llamado Seal. Entonces, si vas a un lugar como este, en el Hall of the Ancients, 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 en el And so um, the seals are meant for players, frankly, like me. Dice que para jugadores <laughs> que no puedan uh, estar en el know, top mil o que no les interese, van a dar una recompensa llamada so seal. And seals are seal. is, you know, no, let me describe it this way. So we've got that ladder we were describing, right? And each rung of that ladder is going to have a seal associated with it. And so as you get better and better each week. For that gauntlet, you're going to be able to earn seals. Cada rango dentro de Gauntlet in terms of the seals tiene una recompensa, un ceal, debe ser algo así como una caja. Que cuando subes de rango te dan una caja nueva. I believe it's called Seal of the Blooded, which is the baseline, all the way up to Seal of the Worthy. And once you hit Seal of the Worthy, now you're ready to be able to compete in the leaderboard. And that's the point when you're trying to get Seal of the Worthy each week. And that's the point when you're trying to get Seal of the Worthy each week. Um, Dice que intentar estar en el top mil cada semana <laughs> supone llevarte esa recompensa y todos los rangos que has saltado. Still something that's pretty cool that you can display to other players to let them know that you know you're still pretty good at the leaderboards. It's just maybe you're not on the leaderboard itself. I so, believe in you, Dan. Yeah, <laughs> we uh, believe I, in you. Yeah, belief, belief is great. También te digo. Esto es Entra, tal cual lo habrán en el instante o lo habrán en el minuto o lo habrán. Entra, mata cuatro bichos y salte. Ya está. Ha rankeado. Y esto es el top 1000. Si estás a la hora que tienes que estar, es imposible que no entres en el top 1000. No vayas el último día cuando la gente ha tenido tiempo. Si hay build support. Pero lo mejor resultado lo tienen cuatro carries en diferentes direcciones. Players can, uh, we'll hear more news about when Gauntlet actually hits really, really soon. Uh, we'll have information on that. Dice que de Gauntlet va a salir players, muy pronto, pero no con la temporada. Lo repito otra vez. Bit about some Absolutely. Of those season three components. Of course, with season, uh, a new season, there are, uh, a, there's a new season journey, and there is a new battle pass. There's a lot of uh, uh, feedback that we got um, from players and some data that we actually saw from players related to Um, season journey and some optimizations that we've kind of made to make it a little bit more friendly, a little bit better for players specifically. I know one big thing uh, that we uh, ended up hitting on specifically was, uh, for instance, like the um, one of the components for season journey last season was like, hey, you need to kill 10 people in PvP, yeah, yeah. Uh, which made it a little <laughs> difficult for some yeah. people, and we, we even saw that in some of our data from, from players. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah we, we're looking over the data, we're listening to your feedback, and um, yeah, PvP objectives just aren't that popular. And so 
um, because we're uh, ¿En serio? always keeping an eye on you o sea, know, improving the game, improving the objectives for the season uh, journey. We decided to modify some of the PVP objectives that exist, and then there's one in particular that we ripped out of the execution right now. Like, and then there's one in particular that we ripped out of the execution right now. Like, and then there's one in particular that we ripped out of the execution right now. Like, and then there's one in particular that we ripped out of the execution right now. Like, and then there's one in particular that we ripped out of the execution right now. Like, and then there's one in particular that we ripped out of the execution right now. Like, and then there's one in particular that we ripped out of the execution right now. Like, and then there's one in particular that we ripped out of the execution right now. Like, and then there's one in particular that we ripped out of the execution right now. Like, and then there's one in particular that we ripped out of the execution right now. Like, and then there's one in particular that we ripped out of the execution right now. Like, and then there's one in particular that we ripped out of the execution right now. Like, and then there's one in particular that we ripped out of the execution right now. Like, and then there's one in particular that we ripped out of the execution right now. Like, and then there's one in particular that we ripped out of the execution right now. Like, and then there's one in particular that we ripped out of the execution right now. Like, and then there's one in particular that we ripped out of the execution right now. Like, and then there's one in particular that we ripped out of the execution right now. Like, and then there's one in particular that we ripped out of the execution right now. Like, and then there's one in particular that we ripped out of the execution right now. Like, and then there's one in particular that we ripped out of the execution right now. Like, and then there's one in particular that we ripped out of the execution right now. Like, and then there's one in particular that we ripped out of the execution right now. Like, and then there's one in particular that we ripped out of the execution right now. Like, and then there's one in particular that we ripped out of the execution right now. Like, and then there's one in particular that we ripped out of the execution right now. Like, and then there's one in particular that we ripped out of the execution right now. Like, and then there's one in particular that we ripped out of the execution right now. Like, and then there's one in particular that we ripped out of the execution right now. Like, and then there's one in particular that we ripped out of the execution right now. Like, and then there's one in particular that we ripped out of the execution right now. Like, and then there's one in particular that we ripped out of the execution right now. Like, and then there's one in particular that we ripped out of the execution right now. Like, and then there's one in particular that we ripped out of the execution right now. Like, and then there's one in particular that we ripped out of the execution right now. Like, and then there's one in particular that we ripped out of the execution right now. Like, and then there's one in particular that we ripped out of the execution right now. Like, and then there's one in particular that we ripped out of the execution right now. Like, and then there's one in particular that we ripped out of the execution right now. Like, and then there's one in particular that we ripped out of the execution right now. Like, and then there's one in particular that we ripped out of the execution right now. Like, and then there's one in particular that we ripped out of the execution right now. Like, and then there's one in particular that we ripped out of the execution right now. Like, and then there's one in particular that we ripped out of the execution right now. Like, and then there's one in particular that we ripped out of the execution right now. Like, and then there's one in particular that we ripped out of the execution right now. Like, and then there's one in particular that we ripped out of the execution right now. Like, and then there's one in particular that we ripped out of the execution right now. Like, and then there's one in particular that we ripped out of the execution right now. Like, and then there's one in particular that we ripped out of the execution right now. Like, and then there's one in particular that we ripped out of the execution right now. Like, and then there's one in particular that we ripped out of the execution right now. Like, and then there's one in particular that we ripped out of the execution right now. Like, and then there's one in particular that we ripped out of the execution right now. Like, and then there's one in particular that we ripped out of the execution right now. Like, and then there's one in particular that we ripped out of the execution right now. Like, and then there's one in particular that we ripped out of the execution right now. Like, and then there's one in particular that we ripped out of the execution right now. Like, and then there's one in particular that we ripped out of the execution right now. Like, and then there's one in particular that we ripped out of the execution right now. Like, and then there's one in particular that we ripped out of the execution right now. Like, and then there's one in particular that we ripped out of the execution right now. Like, and then Incluso los tochos y o sea, los tochos en plan, si llevo un, un druida, el roar, el que te permite hacerte el hombre lobo. Y han metido también mm. esto, mm. de la temporada, con lo cual te van a rusear y te van a dar mucho interés en, en eso. No te van a dar un número único, pero los ancestrales tochos pueden salir del diario de temporada. Yeah, very so cool. it awesome. no longer says level up to you know chapter three of the season journey. Yeah, yeah, so most definitely. Yeah, it's a uh, and again community feedback has been so helpful for us, especially as no we uh, have been uh, iterating on seasons and going from season to season. So it's been super great. Uh, another big thing that's coming uh, with at least um, season or with season three is it's a cosmetic that I think a lot of uh, players have been uh, 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 or have been looking forward to. Um, first, actually, let's actually jump into de, de, el uh, all pass. this. The, actually, can we do that graphic back? Pass. There we go. Uh, yeah, so a lot of new cosmetics coming. One big portal, thing, you know, that was really platino, popular season emotes, two was the town portal. Yeah, love those town portals. Uh, everyone, yeah. everyone is rolling with the blood portal. <laughs> I am not rolling with the blood portal. <laughs> I'm like the the one person that's rolling with like the angelic wings one. Uh, if there's other people like that, like shout out to those people. You're <laughs> part of my crew. Uh, but there are also um, cool new skins and, of course, new emotes and, uh, that are coming with the new uh, premium battle pass uh, for uh, season three. And then one uh, uh, item that está muy bien. I think we y actually haven't really, really added to since launch is uh, emblems. Ya, wey, ya uh, emblems are es que pensar que si os dan 700 de platino por completarlo, por completarlo cosa que es muy fácil, a mí me lo he dado la season pasada. Y es que me está costando 3 euros el pase de batalla. Claro que te lo voy a comprar. 3 euros cada 3 meses. Shut up and take my money. Le hice un vídeo específico que decía que este pase, en general, el pase de batalla de Diablo 4 es súper rentable. Te están dando 200. 240 euros en skin por 3 euros. No me jodas, claro que te lo compro. Y luego 3 a través del Battle Pass. Awesome. So yeah, we're uh, adding in emblems. I know that's something that people were, were asking about because we, we've always had the three at launch. Yep. And so uh, this now gives you the opportunity of actually collecting additional emblems in season three. And of course, uh, season blessings yes. are also getting uh, adjusted for uh, the new season because I know with the last ah, season, of esto course, they were, uh, specifically El tema de las, blood. De las uh, this one de la is, uh, of course, being updated for season three, que including esto me parece um, super items importante. that uh, affect like, like tuning Stones, for instance, yeah. Yeah. Uh, specific for players. So, uh, season blessings. Bueno, will be getting, uh, Tenemos el bus de experiencia. 
And then um, I know el that bus one de thing that, um, recibir mejores recompensas people, de la grita del colegio, de las cajas de susurros, is, uh, el bus de que te dura mucho más los errines, uh, el bus uh, de que te dan más cosas, three, los so cofres de marea de sangre uh, to, y el bus de que recibes más piedras de estas nuevas. Here really shortly related to uh, being able to jump into boss ladders. So, yeah, lots of stuff for season three. Yes, Big tons season. of stuff for season three. <laughs> yeah. Biggest season yet for Diablo 4. Um, and, you know, we, we covered a lot. I'm looking forward to people jumping in. It begins on January 23rd, uh, where players will be able to actually yeah. jump in and uh, create new characters for the season. So, uh, Dan, Madeline, thank you guys so much. Oh, you're welcome. Really appreciate it. Yeah. And then I know for the next part of our broadcast, we're actually going to use some amazing tech. <laughs> <laughs> First time we're doing this uh, because we now have two different sets. One here in Albany, which is themed like Cathedral of Light. You know, we're yeah. in yeah. a yeah. colder environment. Uh, it is cold outside in Albany. I'm <laughs> not used to that as a, a California person. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> I landed lots of snow. Um, but it's like... Cathedral of Light, Fractured Peaks, yep. you know, kind of feeling. And of course, we'll be going to Irvine, where we're in like the, <laughs> I hate to say the pits of hell. <laughs> Irvine is not like hell, I promise. I live there. Uh, but, but our studio is like that, and th we are going to be joined by uh, Adam Jackson. Uh, Adam, hopefully you're there. There you are. Hello. Hey, I hope you can hear me. I'm always I paranoid. Can Por cierto, este sí, si lo guiña el ojo, no está ligando con vosotros, eh? Adam, you know, they always tic. call it the Adam and Adam show whenever you and I are on. Es un tío majo de cojones, we're going to be talking a little bit about um, some of the balance changes este es el que hace los uh, coming with este es el que va a borrar season three al mago and, y el and, que and what players can expect. And, a, and a little bit about um, some of the philosophy as Están well of what you have kind of, uh, or what, what you want to actually present to the players of what they can expect uh, going forward, especially with Gauntlet being involved. So do you want to uh, take it away? Yeah, totally. Got lots to talk about today, so I'm pretty excited. All right. So I'm really going to be going over three different major topics today when we talk about uh, what's coming in for season three and beyond. So the first one is, I think, what everybody expects. We have some new no class updates coming. Coming. Uh, uh, A little bit of a caveat here, though. I'm not going to be going over every single note or every single update, but I am going to give you kind of a high level of what's coming for every class. Uh, but you'll definitely find out some more stuff when you look into the patch notes and see other things we're doing. Um, and patch notes are going to be coming out very soon, like tomorrow. Is tomorrow, my actually. Yeah, yeah, they, they, they're yeah. coming out tomorrow, so players can expect to see them tomorrow. We'll, we'll give you a preview today, but you'll see the full patch notes. Nos van a dar una preview, pero las notas Correct, so it'll be mañana. a preview, but you know, you'll still get an idea of kind of what we're thinking and what we're doing. Uh, next, I want to do a brief explanation of kind of how we currently view class balance. You know, the game's gone through a lot. We've been out for a little while. We also have the gauntlet coming. Sentido? So, uh, you know, a lot of change is coming, and we're going to be adapting to it. And then the last thing y is kind of a roadmap for our plans for seasonal updates going eh, forward. Uh, cambios, I kind of want to give people some more concrete ideas season. of when we update and how we update. Porque so la season no se acaba el día que la lanzan. So first for the Barbarian, uh, we've got a few things going on. Uh, the first one is some big improvements to Charge. Uh, you know, right now Charge is, you know, you need a bunch of different legendaries and other effects to make it really kind of seen and be powerful. And we're going to be moving a lot of power to the baseline skill from legendaries and other effects. Uh, it's going to do a lot more damage now than it did before. Uh, we might be insane, but I think it's really cool, and so we're going to do it. Se but you can see here kind of season two what the damage numbers look like. Uh, you know, did like 1,200, and then season three, it's like 12,000. So, you know, like eight, like 8x or something like that. Uh, so it's going to do a lot of damage now. Bien, 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 of course, bien, legendaries bien. are adjusted to compensate, but yeah, you should have a lot more fun with it out the gate. Uh, we're also doing a lot of buffs to key passives, uh, such as Walking Arsenal. Uh, to kind of keep them uh, up to date with the one that most people pick, that shall not be named. Uh, and then also we're uh, just seeing a lot of shouts. You know, we got a lot of feedback that players don't really like feeling kind of mandatory that they put all the different shouts on their bar. Uh, I played a Barbarian last season, I know how it feels. Um, so we're trying to kind of walk this line where we want it to be fun and you can put all the shouts on your bar, but it's not required and you kind of feel like there's good reasons not to. So we've done some changes there. Interesante. And, you know, if I were a betting man, I'd say I'd put my money into, you know, charge and maybe some key passives as far as things that I think uh, you'll be happy to see. So I think you'll be uh, kind of happy uh, with our changes there. You know, Adam, whenever we have you on, you have to talk about class stonks. Lo de que bufe la pasiva is, de, is del class tema del Walking Arsenal yes. me parece interesante. So next, let's go over to the Sorcerer. Again, these aren't all the changes. These are just high-level stuff. Uh, first one is, you know, we've 
we know that Sorcerer players have kind of had some pain trying to apply Vulnerable to enemies, so we're giving it to Lightning Spear now. So just baseline, Lightning Spear, when it crits enemies, will now make them vulnerable. So you have another avenue there that isn't Frost Nova to consistently apply it. Uh, we also have some buffs to various Paragon Legendary nodes that you can look Lightning forward Spear to that kind of open up or make some things stronger. Críticos. And last but not least, uh, for you Meteor fans, Ojo. the Meteor build is getting quite a few updates and buffs across los the board. Uh, we also are giving, a, are giving them a new unique that kind of changes how you think about it and how it plays that I'll be showing off in a little bit. So uh, can't, wait to, uh, can't wait to see it. It's so good. It's so good. Yeah, totally. So again here, uh, Meteor players and Elemental Summoner players, like the ones that like to use the different conjurations. Uh, we got some stuff there in the legendary or the Paragon legendary notes. Hola, 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 and next we've got the Rogue. So we've got quite a few changes coming to the Rogue. There's a lot of buffs to really underuse skill and skill upgrades. You know, a lot of people use, you know, Twisting Blades and Poison Imbue and things like that. And we're really targeting some of the things that people aren't using so much and giving them some love. Oh, por favor, give me a flecha. Um, in particular, we're targeting range builds to make them more viable sí. and fun. Uh, I know, I think it's the Van Precision a Key Passive las is, de rango. is Hostia, getting a bit la lluvia of a rework del and a lot of stuff coming uh, for things like rico. Penetrating Shot and stuff like that. And we're also updating pretty much all the range uniques, including Wind Force, Sky Hunter, and Evil Horn. Equipo, si vais a Rogue, miraos mi guía del Rogue de powerful, I think. Lluvia de flechas. Um, es una so puta here maravilla. again, some buffs coming really to range builds in general, and also Caltrops, which is the, a bit of an underused skill that we were giving some love. And then we've got the Druid next. So here we've got some buffs coming to various spirit boons that aren't seen as much play as others. As an example, uh, Prickle Skin is the one that gives you some thorns. Uh, the amount there is being increased by a lot. You can see here in Season 2, it gives about 300 Hostia, this level. And in Season 3, no, it gives about 4x what it del, used to. So, uh, some big buffs coming to various spirit boons that are underused. And then, uh, well, so Rabies is getting quite a few upgrades. Uh, we got a new Legendary coming in for Rabies. That's pretty neat. And then we also have a buff to Enhance Rabies. So for all of you that love spreading your poisons among enemies, uh, you're going to be a little... A rabies, tiene sentido. Está muy poco utilizada. So here again, we got some buffs. Uh, I put Rabies here, uh, but also Lightning mucho. Storm. And we'll be showing off a new Eso, unique there too. Uh, I'm actually probably going to play Lightning Storm in Season 3 because it's got a really cool unique coming that we're going to... So you'll have that to look forward to. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm so excited for you to show these uniques. I think people are going to uh, probably cater their builds for those classes to the, some of those uniques. They're pretty, I mean, we have uniques coming for every class. We're just going to be yeah. showing those two off today. Again, not everything, but they're pretty cool. Uh, last but not least, we've got Necromancer. So, Blood and Iron Golems. Uh, so, fun fact for those of you who didn't know, but the Bone Golem, when it, auto, when it attacks enemies with its normal attack, it actually uh, cleaves and hits nearby enemies. And the Blood and Iron Golems didn't, and they were very jealous and unhappy. And so we just decided to give it to them. So now all your golems, uh, your golem friends are going to AOE vale. cleave when they attack. Uh, I didn't mention, put it in the note here, but also just golems, golems in general yeah, are getting some buffs. And I think we even some other minion buffs across the board. Uh, but you can see those in the patch notes. And then a uh, quality of life change coming is that uh, Bone Prison, uh, friendly players Ojo, and your minions can now move through them. Uh, you know, we've seen some situations, La prisión de hueso se puede atravesar, where you go Bone Prison, an huevo. enemy in your minion build, and then Esto your minions actually tocho, can't eh? get to the enemy, or you know, they start, they want to go somewhere else, and the Bone Prison actually blocks them. So now you and your friends will just be able to go through it. Um, it'll be a lot more usable. And then uh, we got a lot of Bone Spirit upgrades, uh, including a redesign of one of the aspects, which is the aspect of Swelling Curse. Uh, I think Bone Spirit players bueno. are going to be really happy. Um, so you can see here, on the left is kind of the old version of Bone Spirit, and it basically dealt increased damage based on distance traveled. And the gameplay there was you want to be kind of far away from your enemy and then let it slowly creep towards them, it would do more damage. Same uh, but it turns out uh, Bone Spirit players really just kind of shotgun it and try and get next to enemies, so it wasn't really very usable or good most of the time. So now we change it where this legendary gives you everything a Bone Spirit player would want. You get more, more crit chance on Bone Spirit, which means a CDR goes down thanks to its upgrades. And then when you hit enemies, your max essence is temporarily increased, which means uh, more damage on Bone Spirit. So this really just kind of gives you everything that you want. And so here again, uh, we got some buffs coming to Bone Spirit and to Golems for the Necromancers. So if you use either of those, I think you'll be uh, eating pretty well this season. And again, these are just some examples. We got a lot more stuff in the patch notes for everybody. Next, let's go over the couple of new uniques. So the first one is that oh, meteor one God. I talked about. So this unique is the Starfall coordinate. It basically being like a spender skill 
into a charge based skill so now you can actually run meteor with other things like fireball or incinerate or firewall and it makes it into a very powerful cooldown based skill that summons a bunch of meteors uh, it also synergizes with your enchantment um and you basically just drop a lot more meteors on around like carpet bombing enemies with them it's, it's pretty awesome and then the, the next one is the new druid unique this is for lightning storm Oh. And basically what this does is it makes your lightning storm grow quicker oh. so you can get up to that maximum amount i think it's five uh, four or five stacks really quickly okay, and wow. then also when your lightning bolts crit uh, an additional lightning bolt will come down and do more damage and that additional lightning bolt also it's ex okay, still a wow. lightning storm lightning bolt so you get all of your synergies with all of your other effects so basically it turns into lightning everywhere which is just pretty cool when you combine it with all of the other uh lightning based legendaries and stuff Next, uh, now that we're done with the class updates, I kind of want to talk a little bit about how we've been viewing class balance and how we're going to be thinking about going forward in Season 3 and beyond. So one of the things that we've been talking about a lot on the team is kind of thinking about how should we be updating the game when it comes to buffing and nerfing classes and builds, and then also how often we update it. And I kind of want to get a little into the weeds here to understand... Me gusta, me gusta mucho lo meteoritos. Ahora le echaremos un vistazo. Uh, so first is that we want to balance kind of two competing concepts that are always at odds with each other that we believe ver, players que, want that really make for a fun Hay game, a fun experience, particularly in Diablo 4. But this is honestly kind of true for most games as far as when they update when it comes to balance. So the first one is we believe that players really want to feel like you, know, you all can have fun with powerful builds that you discover. Kind of a core yeah. part of playing no these games jugar is... Meta. You know, you think outside the si box and you discover o sea, something, or maybe si even dos. you follow a guide, but you're, you find mago. something that's really cool and awesome, and then you want to go wreck no mola que and, you know, tan, tan, tan it, right? You want to feel like you have this sense of permanence where, you know, you can make something, it's going to be cool, and you can go and have fun with it. But then on the flip side uh, here, we also believe that players want the meta to refresh so that the same things aren't obviously the best choices forever. Right, uh, looking back at season two, easy uh, to point to his ball light. Es right? uh, you know, ball light is really fun and awesome. Uh, new splash is also kind of bug. Uh, but you know, during <laughs> season no two, it, a lot of people had a lot of fun with it. No uh, but we believe that you know, if we just kept things like ball lightning or Hoda Barb or these things that are really powerful for many seasons over and over, uh, not only sorcerer Adios, players in the case lightning. of ball lightning, but even players of other classes <laughs> start to feel conocerte. this kind of gravitational pull and a lot of pressure to play the things that are obviously more powerful than other things. And then players will start to feel pigeonholed into being forced to play very specific things. And so kind of this dichotomy of these two competing factors where you want to have a sense of permanence and finding things and having fun and not being afraid that Blizzard's going to take it away from you, but you also want to have a sense of, you know, the same thing isn't strong forever, and you look at the leaderboards or, or, or wherever you, you know, look for your feedback, and everybody just is playing the same thing. Tenéis en mi Twitter like, un resumen bastante filed, completo right? de lo que ha pasado, eh? So, in this vein, um, some of the larger changes that you're going to see in Season 3 that are kind of bug fixes or nerfs, uh, and, you know, before uh, a lot during BlizzCon and before we've talked about how you want to give players a heads up of what's coming. Oh, um, So these are the things you're going to see when, at the launch of Season 3 that are kind of being, they're having their power lowered. Uh, the first one is the ball lightning enchantment, uh, or enhancement, sorry, is causing it to deal well. Know, too much damage, obviously. Um, the rogues, uh, rogues have also been getting extra combo points via very specific unique interactions. That's made them very powerful. Uh, Twix, Twisting Blades, again on the rogue, and Poison Imbue have had some interactions that we're cleaning up that makes it do more damage than was intended. Uh, the Druid very recently kind of climbed to the top of uh, the power level in the game due to kind of a an unfortunate interaction with Blurred Beast, uh, where we you can double dip damage. Uh, and really, we've had a couple cases like this earlier in the game, so we're redesigning this legendary power, uh, where you know you can kind of apply a dot or some effect, and then something else does damage based on the dot, or some dealing damage on something else, and then that damage double dips, and then just goes into crazy town really quick. Um, so we're, we're nipping that in the bud. Uh, for the Barbarian, the Hammer of the Ancients, the Violent Hammer of the Ancients, which is one of the upgrades that you can get, was always being applied whether or not you had it. And we're, we're cleaning that up, so basically everybody would always take the other upgrade, and then they were getting both. And then Overpower, this is more of an oversight, not a bug, but it was kind of just too strong in general. If you remember when Season 2 launched, we, we redid all the combat math in the game, and back then Overpower, you know, nobody was really playing it. And then we really wanted to give it some love, and we definitely did. Uh, so... It's a little bit too strong right now, and so it's just getting toned down. 
And now next I want to talk about our season roadmap. Kind of, uh, you know, when we were talking about how we think about how often we should update the day update the game we wanted to let you the community know kind of what you know and as they were como se queda el mago de meteoritos como so right now our plan is to update the game twice per season when it comes Bien. to class balance dentro de 40 uh, really días vamos a tener una mejora one update at the launch of a que va a suponer seguramente la entrada de gable 40 días vete a tomar por el and then we also plan to do a mid season update and that'll come somewhere around the center of the season class season se van a partir en dos primera semana y media de gameplay y dentro de una semana más smaller of an update there but it's still something that I'll, you know, do a bunch of buffs and we're going to detail what you can expect from these. So first let's talk about season launch and what you can expect when a new season comes when it comes to classes and systems so on the balance. So the first thing is we're going to be giving you some new content. You can count on this. Uh, we're going to be giving new legendaries and uniques that are added to the game. Uh, the amount that we do can be variable, but what we can do is that time. every class should be getting something new in this space. So you can expect some amount of new legendaries, and some amount of new uniques that'll give you new toys to play with. Next, there are balance updates. Uh, we'll be doing both balance and design updates for all the classes. Both and by design updates, I mean you know, some more in-depth things where we change around functionality rather than just moving numbers up and down. Uh, again, the amount is variable here. It kind of depends on the needs of the game at the time. Toda la clase van a enviar algún único doing. nuevo. No se han decidido del bar, idea, el del so you, you can druida y el del mago. Como sean el resto. Many buffs to things that are underperforming. A few nerfs to the things that are really Hola, overperforming, and then bug fixes, which Hola, can bro. honestly be both buffs or nerfs, depending on what the actual bug is. And then we also plan to do other game updates. You know, our team isn't really only just doing classes. We also look at monster balance and feel. We do systems with drop rates and things like that. Um, how quickly players can get things that let them have access to different uh, types of content. All of that. So you can expect that at the beginning of a season. And then last but not least are larger updates and initiatives, right? These aren't guaranteed every season, uh, but we want to launch these when they're ready. These are kind of, you know, the, the big things that really shake up the game and change how players fundamentally interact with things. An example of some things here, or a couple things that we did in Season 2, you know, we updated the resistance uh, math and combat math to the game, and that was kind of a really big change of just how uh, players interact with monsters and how they interact with their gear and stats and how they scale things. But we also do support for other things that might not seem so obvious, like content like Abattoir of Zir, where we have to go and look at the monsters, we have to look at the scaling, we have to look at when they do these things. So, uh, you know, we, we support all of those larger updates and initiatives as well, and you can expect these kinds of things going forward in seasons. But again, not every season, it just depends on uh, when it's ready to come out. And next, let's talk about the mid-season patch and kind of what that looks like. So the first thing is we want to bring back previous season fan favorites. You know, one of the nice things about a seasonal kind of model for a game is that Hostia, we can experiment mola, eh? with things and then bring back the things o sea, that sí sí, So an example que van a meter a mitad de uh, season four was the bullet that rains. You know, a lot of the bullet and hearts in season one had really cool anillos, designs that people really liked and got attached to. And we were able to bring that back in the form of unique rains, right? Uh, o sea, going podríamos forward, recuperar we cosas de la season de la sangre. The way that we bring back these designs could be legendaries, uniques, or even other ways, right? Like we can maybe just add it as paragon nodes or passives or actives or other ways of skill tree. Um, we don't really want to be limited to it. Must always be uniques or it must always be legendaries. But what we do want to limit ourselves to is that we definitely want to promise that we can do one thing per class. And we also think that we can pull from all seasonal designs, not only from the previous season, right? If the design of the power mechanic of a season doesn't really fit into something that's evergreen for players, then we don't want to be limited to trying to shoehorn it in. We may just bring back, you know, maybe a lot of malignant hearts or a lot of blood seals uh, people really got attached to. We don't want to be limited to like, oh, we can only bring back four or five things and then we can never bring more. So we're just going to kind of kind of look like what happened in the past and people liked and then bring some of those things back. And then si the balance updates, we also want to do this in the mid-season patch. Uh, the scope of this will be smaller compared to the beginning of the viendo, season. Eh? Uh, and we also want to do other game updates, you know, like I said before, to monsters, systems, drop rates, and some, some of those things. Uh, we also want to try mixing a lot of buffs for each class. And then we will be doing bug fixes, and these will be both buffs and nerfs. And we'll go into a little more detail of that in a minute. And then we're really going to try and hit this goal. Uh, no promises. These are famous last words for me. But, you know, we want to try and do few to no nerfs that really aren't bugs. And our kind of thinking and philosophy here is that we know that unlike the beginning of a season, players spent a lot of time farming for these things. And we don't want you to be scared of making powerful stuff and then knowing that we're going to take it away if it's too strong, right? And we want to have a sense of permanence when you start a season that you can try and target something that's cool and then finish it. Um, but... You know, sometimes we need to if something's way too far out of control, particularly now that we have the gauntlet coming in. 
And we, our plan is to really broadcast the nerfs, uh, whether they're design or bug fixes, before the mid-season update, so that you have an idea of what's coming, so that you can adjust your builds. Por lo menos mola porque avisan que no va a haber nerfeos de so mid-season, a no ser que sea un bug. So now let's give a couple examples here of kind of, you know, if these things that existed in season three and beyond, how would we think about and how would we handle these in season three? Tiene muy buena pinta. Me gusta mucho lo que estoy viendo, sobre todo porque Quieren que so, el juego you know, tenga una versión two, like inicial before, the de una versión de eh, Mid Season para darle más vida. Applied, right? uh, basically, overpower builds were just getting 30% more multiplicative damage for free. El problema que tiene uh, con el overpower bug, not intended es que es all. muy bestia. This is something that we would fix in a mid season patch. So, like, if this happened in season 3, you could expect that in the mid season patch we would bug fix this, and you know that would be a nerf to that build. On the other ah, hand, the a little bit more complicated one. Uh, so if you remember Ossified Essence, you Necromancer players, uh, this was your key passive, and it was really, really, really good. Um, it basically says that your bone skills deal more damage based on each point of essence correcto, you have above 50. The gameplay here that we had intended was, you know, you try to increase your mass essence, which is a fun optimization game that you have. But then you also have some gameplay of trying to only cast and then get back to max as soon as you can. So you care about resource regen. Like, there's all these cool gameplay and ionization things going on. Uh, what we didn't anticipate, though, was that players would get as much max essence as they were able Not to, enough. or that they were able to keep it as high as they were able to. And those were really just oversights on our part. So then in Season 2, you know, we, we nerfed this by 50%, a whopping 50%, and I still think this is probably one of the strongest key passives in the game. That's how good it was. It's really good. Um, but, you know, it still keeps all the gameplay that it had before. So what if this existed in Season 3? Well, here, this would kind of be more of a question mark for us. Uh, we may fix it in the mid-season patch. We would definitely fix it at the start of next season. But technically, this isn't a bug. It's just something that is just really strong that we kind of had an oversight about. Um, here, we would be looking at, you know, community feedback. Um, how badly is it warping the meta? Are other builds in Necromancer really not able to function at all because this one is so much better? We'd be looking at other, more things like that that are qualitative uh, types of feedback. And then make a judgment call there. And you know, in these cases, this is where it gets really doodly. Sometimes we may be wrong, but we're going to really try and lean on the side of not changing unless we really feel like it's needed to keep the game healthy. So again, kind of a recap of TLDR. Uh, first, our strategy here with players is to communicate early and communicate often. We want to let you know particularly when it comes to nerfs that's coming and really what we're thinking. Books. Um, no and then again, at the start of the season, you can expect some new content in the form of tal, legendaries pues sí, and leaks. We'll also be getting some more in-depth balance updates, including design update, updates to things that we feel we could do better at. Uh, lots of buffs, few nerfs, but bug a fixes ver, that are both buffs and nerfs to keep the no game si me gusta, pero lo And then in the mid-season patch, you get new content in the form of uh, previous fan favorites from other seasons. And then we will be doing a balance patch. Uh, it'll be a bit smaller, it'll be mostly buffs, and then bug fixes that are both buffs and nerfs. And hopefully, few to no, to no design nerfs uh, is what we're going to try and commit to. And so, again, the reason why we're doing this is we really want you to know kind of where we're thinking, and we want to try and commit to concrete things. We es que cada vez que tocan algo, cada vez que nerfean algo, les llueve la de Dios. Y lo entiendo. Entiendo que estén un poco acojonados con el tema. Again, last thing is that you know we are open to feedback on this. This isn't set in stone that forevermore we'll be only doing two updates per season when it comes to balance. Um, we're trying to find that right amount of time where you feel like you can experiment and have fun, but the same thing isn't strong forever. So, you know, please give us your feedback. Let us know what you think. Um, but this is how we're going to start, and then we're going to go from here. So, thank you. De nada. Awesome. Thank you so much, well, uh, Adam, for going bien, over uh, all the balance changes coming for Season 3 along with the roadmap, which is really Ahora important. Saber en qué and so that's, en that's a big thing that we will make sure we do is obviously communicate often, communicate early, specific about, uh, or specifically about all the balance changes that Entonces, may occur with the start of a season, and of course bugueado, with that no season and just for, no like, like, better understanding within the community, if you follow version numbers of our, 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 our updates, we usually do client patches with, um, uh, big patches, uh, usually mid-season patches land around, like, around the 0.3 variant of a patch, if, if, if you want to go specifically in that. Um, we do have a lot of uh, other quality of life items that are also coming within Season 3 that we do want to get into before we jump into Q&A. Uh, and we did want to uh, tackle some of these because these are really big and these are based off of uh, players and what they're telling us. And of course, uh, things and improvements that we've already talked about beforehand that are now actually coming into uh, Diablo 4. Um, one big thing that I know that we mentioned uh, in one of our prior streams with the campfire Joe Shelley, our game director, actually brought up, uh, which was Helltides. Uh, Helltides was, 
you know, something we learned within season two and season of blood is everyone really enjoyed blood harvest, and blood harvest was always up. Uh, hell tides though were Madre, kind of minutos de break entre una y otra para cambiar de and, posición you know, y joder con las águilas. was something that we wanted to improve upon uh, for players and now hell tides will actually be up pretty much all the time uh, so players will be able to actually jump into hell tides whenever they need to there is a five minute break uh, to kind of reset the zone yeah. and stuff but uh, every hour you will be able to jump into uh, a hell tide which is great so it's more opportunities to earn cinders uh, and of course uh, more opportunities to uh, earn uh, and obtain loot or even like things like living steel and stuff yeah. to kind of go through the uh, the uber boss ladder which is great um, the other thing is and this is this is a controversial topic because I don't know how people actually uh, pronounce this but <laughs> I've always called it WASD other people call it WASD some people well, call it WASD we need a pull up I also want to put a pull up within, uh, within Twitch chat maybe you guys can chime in here and let me know what you prefer calling it I'm going to call it WASD but WASD controls are coming to Diablo 4 this is actually something we talked about way back at the launch of the game we heard a lot of players asking specifically for additional control es um, Yo creo que esto uh, opportunities va a ser una gran ventaja para them. quien juegue minions. Pero quien tenga que uh, drew, skin, uh, 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 on, on the D14, shout out to Drew. Uh, claramente uh, beneficiada. Uh, claramente beneficiada. Cualquier build pasiva, una build basada en minions, for una build basada en invocaciones. Uh, uh, offers more, uh, una rango. Uh, which is great to see. So, uh, WASD controls are going to be in Diablo 4, and es this is something we've been talking about. Yeah. De Kule, we're also de las really lucky it came online just as we were putting all those cómodo. hazards in the dungeon. Exactly. Yeah. Now, you know, the players have even more precise, no more precise control yeah. to avoid. WASD feels w very good <laughs> with the <laughs> trap. WASD, however you want to pronounce it, uh, that is uh, going to be they in... They like WASD? Oh, chat likes WASD according mm, to Rich. It's my, okay to be wrong. Básicamente creo que habrá una gran diferencia entre aquellos jugadores que viven una build muy pasiva y los que viven una build muy activa, como puede ser una cuerpo a cuerpo, un arranco que tenga que tarjetear, etc. Pero lo del WASD para poder moverte en las trampas de Kule va a ser la hostia. Creo que nos va a mejorar mucho el gameplay. Uh, respecting on skill trees has always been a little difficult and now there's a more optimized way of being able to do so. Another big uh, uh, community item that a lot of players have been asking for. Uh, this kind of goes uh, uh, hand in hand with the uh, opportunity of actually taking your whole Paragon board and completely resetting it before yeah. as opposed to doing it one by one yeah. that we had before. It's a lot less so finicky now. It, yeah, there's, there's more opportunities to actually respec and do it in a, a much more organized fashion with this. Esta mola bastante porque then, consiste en que uh, eliges los nodos que vas a quitar, los que vas a poner y cuando has terminado de reorganizarlo todo, um, te cobra. I probably get this question maybe like once every single day about gold trading. Um, obviously no, more gold is in the uh, Diablo yeah. for ¿Me has dicho algo? economy sí, 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 or ecosphere with, sí. the, with season, especially since season two. And uh, for console users, like, trading al gold has been de, very difficult. Uh, it's been slow. A la IA de intercambio de oro, uh, porque like si quería darle 30 millones, tenía que estar subiendo. Quite a while trying to trade a significant amount of gold. And so the gold trading UI has been updated for console users, uh, so they'll be able to actually trade gold without having to maybe sí, spend five to ten minutes doing de consola, so in one trade. trade. So de, I know that is a big thing that players have been asking for, so we're happy that's actually being included. And then this one is also kind of uh, calling back to uh, what uh, Joe Shelley had brought up in a, pr a prior campfire chat, uh, which was uh, item, higher item scaling in World Tier 4. I think he uh, used a really good example of how... Uh, vale, os explico. Aquí había un problema muy sencillo. Tú entras en Mundo Tier 4, te haces un boss de mundo y automáticamente te puedes pillar ítems y level 925. Esto era un problema. No podías recién entrado a, a dificultad 4 pillar equipo eh, 925. Lo que han hecho ha sido eliminar ese drop de los bosses de mundo y joder o escalar el drop para que te cueste mucho más llegar a eh, y, y level 925. ¿Por qué? Porque quieren que tengas la experiencia de estar progresando, estar evolucionando, estar mejorando. Cosa que no había ahora mismo porque tú llegabas a tier 4, hacías 4 bosses y te equipabas entero. Or chance and it felt like you should be doing other types of activities beforehand. So making sure that you know there's more options available as opposed to just kind of pigeonholing yourself into maybe timed world bosses and stuff like that from that end. 
And then um, this one is is a, a point of feedback that we've gotten from a lot of players, and this is something that you know we kind of optimized uh, within season two last year. Things like the living steel buff, based off of community feedback, was really big, and so we're actually increasing opportunities to earn uh, the beast and ice uh, summoning items. So uh, this kind of goes back to what I was saying earlier in the in our our stream, where uh, with the boss ladder, there will be more opportunities for players to kind of jump into those. Uh, so there will be additional summoning items for Beast and Nice, uh, which will then, of course, help you eventually get to Uber Durial. Um, and this goes hand in hand with some of the Living Steel buffs that we ended up doing in Season 2 uh, within Helltide. So a lot of quality of life updates, and there's additional ones that players will end up seeing uh, within the patch notes that will be releasing tomorrow. Uh, so you should uh, check out the patch notes. They'll be hitting on Diablo4.com. Uh, sí, la bestia de hielo. Estaba teniendo problemas con la bestia de hielo, tanto con su sigilo de invocación como con los ítems que se utilizaban, tanto para farmearlos como para gastarlos, como el hecho de que no tiene ningún tipo de interés. Van a hacerle modificaciones a la bestia de hielo para que, ya que se encurra la mecánica, sea interesante de farmear. One thing I did want to call out is we actually have a new uh, promo no for, for Twitch starting with season three, and that is our supported streamer prom promo. Uh, we had the supported streamer for season one. We have it again for season two. It is a new mount that players can actually earn. This time it's different. Uh, before we only had a select group of streamers. I think it was like around like 2,000 streamers that signed up and opted in. Now it's for any streamer that streams Diablo 4. Thank you, Twitch, for making the engineering <laughs> updates to allow for it to be just across the whole entire category. Any streamer that is streaming Diablo 4, if you are a viewer and you happen to be watching them, you can either purchase a, a uh, sub from them or gift a sub in, uh, to a uh, total of two. So it could be one gifted, one purchase, or two gifted, and you'll actually end up earning the mount Ojo, as well. Uh, you just need to make sure that your Battle Hicieron Night account evento. is actually linked with your Twitch account. And, uh, you Hicieron un evento en el lanzamiento de la sesión anterior que consistía en que si le regalabas dos subs a un streamer adscrito eh, te regalaban una skin ahora han intentado que cualquiera que esté streameando la categoría Diablo 4 lo pueda hacer lo cual es una forma cojonuda de promover a los streamers de Diablo 4 yo intenté entrar en la anterior y no me dejaron no por nada mal sino que llegué tarde llegué un día tarde o algo así Kind of uh, take part in that uh, from their end, but uh, now our favorite part, which is uh, the Q and A, and uh, we're actually going to be going back and forth between Irvine and here in Albany because Adam Jackson, of course, is still with us uh, vale, to answer any specific questions related to class and class balance that uh, players may have. But I know one question um, that, w as as we queue up questions specifically from our side and have my my live feed right here, will attempt to not butcher names. Uh, maybe I will. I will. Spoilers. Uh, but uh, one question that we do have is, uh, how have the team's thoughts changed in regards to balance since Diablo 4's release? This is a question for Mr. Adam Jackson uh, in Irvine. Uh, you could, esta uh, help us with that answer. Yeah. Um, let me think. ¿Cómo se plantea el equipo de Diablo 4 el tema de balancear las recompensas, las, question, but, uh, I think... eh, los drops <laughs> okay. desde que salió Diablo 4? So, uh, I guess we'll start with because you know there's like a long history of balance, right? I think there's actually a very good story, and we could start even before Los launch. Los que hayan una vez cada nueve millones y medio de yelmos uh, era importante we'll era like y ahora se lo puedes pedir a tu líder y te los da por cuatro monedas. Kind of the launch version of the game into our first season, right? Um, obviously, when we launched the game, we had some, some pretty benign ideals. I think of you know, hey, we want all the classes to be within a certain power range of each other, and everything should be viable for everyone. And you know, basically everything feels good, and there's a lot of different ways to play, right? Um, and then one of the issues that we ran into this season one that I think is interesting to talk about is we realized that in the in our quest to make items and, and item stats really fun and powerful and interesting, we had over budgeted on quite a few of them. And I think just in the interest of time, I'll pick on cooldown reduction. It's a very scary stat to me and the team. Um, so, you know, we realized in the launch version of the game, the cooldown reduction was too high, right? And so players are basically able to solve cooldown reduction, and use that with air quotes, um, and get to a point where they had very low, if any, cooldowns on a lot of their skills. And, the, and this was true for many stats, not just cooldown reduction. But one of the problems that we knew was going to come up that was a kind of future us problem, or really almost immediately us problem, is that if we let players solve these things, whether it's, you know, defensive stats, cooldown reduction, resource, whatever it may be, then, and we let them solve it only in gear, then we're going to get to a state where we can't give exciting things to you anymore that you're going to be really happy about and that will feel impactful because you just got it all in gear, right? And while gear does need to be cool and interesting, 
if you completely solve these things, I can't give you a legendary power or I can't give you something late game that really buffs and changes your build in a meaningful way if you got it from just one source. And so then we launched season one and we're like, okay, you know, we're going to kind of eat our vegetables here and we're going to preserve the long health, term health of the game, but we're going to do these very necessary nerfs and then there are quite a few, right? <coughs> a ver, no le quiero faltar respecto. Pero básicamente os está contando que se aburría en casa, que tenía un perro que lo sacaba a pasear y cosas del estilo. Dice que la Season 1 tenían problemas con el cooldown reduction, que lo tuvieron que balancear, que la Season 2 tuvieron problemas con el tema del vulnerable, crítico, etcétera, que lo tuvieron que balancear. Os está costando un poco qué ha pasado y cómo lo han ido resolviendo. Ya lo sabemos. So we kind of learned a lesson there of like we need to be a lo little bit more thoughtful and careful of when we roll out these things and how we roll them out and then also how we communicate it, right? Because we didn't really tell people the, the intricacies of these problems. We just came out with a patch and you know let you figure it out and that didn't go too well, right? So then in season two came around and you know we did a big combat math update to the game. We were kind of a little worried because you know we had to kind of thread this needle of we also were nerfing player power because we changed a lot of multiplicative synergies to be additive. But we wanted to do it in a way where you felt more powerful and it felt more fun and fair. So we had to do a lot of more work on the monster side and balance monsters to the new expected player power when, you know, vulnerable is not always multiplicative and all of these other crazy things going on. And, and I think we threaded that needle really well. A little bit to my surprise, I'll be honest, I was a little scared going into it because it's just such a big update, right? Um, and then we also decided during season two when it came to balance that instead of trying to, you know, nerf and whack-a-mole things that, that are really strong, Uh, and immediately take them away because it's not supposed to be that way we just kind of let it ride and so that's why you saw things like you know ball lightning hoda barb uh the druid uh poison druid uh rogue combo like oh, many classes had just something that was kind of crazy um and we just let it go um but even now you know towards the, at the end of season two we're seeing that you know some people are starting to be a little upset like hey you know these same builds are just killing everything and if i want to do the really hard content i have to be one of these things because that's the only thing that works Um, and obviously we don't want that to be the future of the game forever. And so now we're, we're trying to come up with a more balanced approach of how we Dice que, que había cosas estúpidamente fuertes como el mago Van Lightning, algún que otro etcétera, que llegó a un punto tan absurdo que todo era tan guansoteable que tuvieron que diseñar un, un contenido Uber, que fue la, el matadero de Lord porque sencillamente no había nada al nivel de las Bill. Las Bill estaban tan 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 fuertes que no había nada a su altura pero que no quieren que se trate de crear contenido más difícil para las builds que destaquen. Se quiere que se trate de meter todas las builds dentro de un rango de un determinado nivel de balance para que el contenido que tiene Diablo 4 esté ajustado a la dificultad. Y entonces hay determinadas builds, como puede ser la de Bad Lightning y tal, que hay que bajarlas para que estén a la altura de otras que, va, que hay que subir. Uh, one question that we at least have gotten regarding uh, season three is um, this is from Ice Fixin. I'm attempting. Uh, mm -hmm. What about group play in vaults? How does that specifically work? Um, because obviously there's like the warding buff and everything. How how do rewards kind of associate with that? Right. So you are able to group up and play through uh, a vault, and um, yeah, it, it behaves pretty much like any other nightmare dungeon. And so, you know, um, there are instances uh, where if you leave the dungeon, uh, you will lose the buff. So we're trying to avoid some cases where players might try to uh, cheat their way to the end. Yeah. Uh, but overall, you know, we're trying to be as supportive as possible for group play. Awesome. Makes sense. And then I know uh, this is a question back for Adam, a popular question uh, regarding uh, minion builds. Uh, and plans for minion builds. <laughs> I know, I know. This one has been uh, uh, brought up in chat quite often. Uh, what are the plans for, like, uh, like maybe Necromancer? ¿Cuáles son los planes para Necro y para builds de minions? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I definitely don't get asked this all the time. Uh, <laughs> so, let me think. So we are, we know the feedback that people want minion builds to be kind of more impactful, and, and these are now I'm kind of going into my opinion, but I think a lot of that feedback comes from a combination of, you know, they don't feel uh, necessarily maybe as powerful as other builds, which we, we can and we do. And if you've noticed in our past patches, we've consistently been number buffing minion builds, um, and even this patch does. Que si miran los parches, estamos bufando siempre a los minions. Este, por ejemplo, acabamos de bufar los golems. More complicated, difficult problem to solve is kind of the relationship between the player and the minion, and making the minions. 
feel really cool and awesome and your investment into them really pay off. Pero claro, tenemos un problema y es que si hacemos que el minion realmente sea al nivel del jugador, tenemos un problema. Queremos hacer los guays, queremos hacer que estén fuertes, pero sin llegar al punto de otlayar al jugador. Rethinking of how the Book of the Dead upgrades work and that relationship between sacrificing and minion upgrades and and really trying to make them do more uh, visually, I think, cool and awesome things and maybe more reacting to you and so you feel like they're They're doing a lot more on their own, a little bit. Dice que no le gusta la idea de que los minions sean capaces de hacerlo un poco por sí mismos. Que tiene que ser algo que sea cool, que esté bien, que interactúe contigo y te bufe, pero no que hagan las cosas por sí mismos. No quieren build de minions ahora mismo. Pero creo que los jugadores realmente quieren esta sensación visceral, como que tengo mi gain conmigo y estamos todos jugando y mezclando con cosas. Así que, ¿sabes? Estamos haciendo números de buffs ahora. Uh, it is a thing that we are looking at. Uh, I don't have any promises of when because, again, this is something that I think is a little more difficult to tackle. Dice que el hecho de hacer los minions lo suficientemente viables es algo que tienen en mente, pero no es algo que tengan a corto plazo. Que este tío, que es el que se encarga de balance, no le gusta la idea de que los minions sean nada más que un support. Awesome, I appreciate it. Um, a question related to uh, Uber uniques on Uber vaults. Uh, is that something that players can find there, or like what can they find in that? So, so Uber uniques are still the domain of. Los minions son para verte cool. That's going to be your best shot for getting Uber uniques. Uh, no para que hagan su puto trabajo por ti. So, um, Nada, lástima. Eso me ha hecho daño. Pensé que solo eran incompetentes, uh, no que tenían malicia. Um, defeating Uber Malfus is going to be the only way to earn those. Awesome. Yeah, so players, like, will be able to get really, really, like, powerful, unique tuning yes. stones specifically from those. And uh, I will spoil it a little bit. We did technically have, oh. uh, like, PC Gamer did a, a, a oh, good interview okay. with, with, uh, <laughs> uh, with Sean, and, and I know it was kind of, like, revealed specifically in, in one of the, the shots there, so... Ah, want, like, es verdad. Se les ha filtrado, no, han hecho como so, queriendo... Hacerse los interesantes, uh, han hecho Adam, como que Adam, había dos runas especiales, escondidas, tal. Oh, way, Resulta que le han dado una entrevista a una revista gamer y ha filtrado la runa. Una de ellas. Snapshotting. Snapshotting is something that um, uh, kind of appeared, especially uh, as players were going through like Avatar of Zir. Uh, do we have any plans regarding snapshotting? What we might do for that? Yeah, uh, we do have things coming. I don't have anything to announce today. Uh, it won't be at the beginning of season three, but we we do have fixes coming for snapshotting. We're aware of the problem. Um, it came on. It came on a little hot at the end of season two. But uh, yeah, we've talked about it. We've seen it. We we kind of know the intricacies of it, and we'll be taking a look at it in the awesome. near future. Awesome, I appreciate it. Um, a question that I've also seen a, a few times in chat about Zoltan Cool. Funny enough, uh, uh, do we like encounter Zoltan Cool in this? Do, or? do not encounter him. He is still dead. No digging up his head this time. Pregunta um, básica: Zoltan Cool está o no está? Several lore books no. that drop throughout the vaults and Son sus baúl. Um, La idea de Zoltan Cool está, pero Zoltan Cool no. Of course, we have to hear Zoltan Cool and his wonderful yeah. voice yes. of talking down to everyone. <laughs> um, so that, that makes perfect sense. Um, I know uh, a question regarding um, uh, the vault specifically. Is that an area that players can actually maybe potentially level up Paragon Glyphs or is that still something that is... Uh, ¿En los vaults uh, se puede elevar los glyphos? Uh, tied to ¿Te dan Paragon Glyphs? So the Nightmare versions of vaults should work the same way as Nightmare Dungeons in that En las versiones pesadillas, sí. To, to level up your glyphs se puede elevar awesome. los glyphos yeah, en los vaults. A lot of people were hearing about the Nightmare vaults and they're going like, well, does that serve also the same... Yeah. Like, can I do almost like get both objectives in one type of thing, which you now can? Uh, so, and that was from Galley055 who asked that question uh, specifically. And then um, I know a uh, question we have from uh, UN Tanks Up. Uh, bad, terrible, Adam. Uh, how many times can we do the gauntlet in a week? So we have not restricted players' access to the gauntlet. ¿Cuántas veces podemos hacer el enfrentamiento de Gauntlet a la semana? Las que te dé la gana, disfruta. Que se trata de que tienes que mejorar, así que te dejamos que practiques. Entra a veces que te dé la gana. Como un punto de género, entra todo lo que quieras. Entonces, 
No tiene ningún tipo de key ni nada que tengas que farmear. El único requisito para entrar a hacer de Gauntlet es estar en Mundo 4. El segundo requisito es que lo lancen, cosa que pasará dentro de 40 días. Eh, Tarichu se mantiene. Y tenemos una mecánica nueva de, de Power Leveo, se llama eh, Terremotos Arcanos. Fermel. Uh, yes, that is still on track for season four. We have a, a, a really massive itemization update coming uh, specifically ah, for that season. Ah, en la season 4 uh, viene un cambio de la itemización de puta madre. Pero por ahora no nos van a dar detalles. Hay un problema con los ítems, lo comentaron en el anterior Campfire, que es lo de tener que ponerte las gafas para eliminar uno por uno todos los putos ítems con todos sus afijos para ver qué haces. Pero ese cambio no va a venir hasta dentro de tres meses. Herramientas sociales. ¿Cuándo? ¿Cómo? ¿Dónde? Hey, are we making any changes and everything towards that? And really, this is something that we addressed at BlizzCon as well. I, I think Tiffany answered this one, where um, it is something that we're looking into, and we're the the team is obviously seeing the feedback, and it's something that we're we're planning on working and making better as uh, through the lifetime. Llegará, pero no está. Escúchame, Adam, con todo el cariño del mundo. Tenéis un puto chat de comercio para scammers. Cámbiale el nombre a social y deja que con el botón secundario podamos invitar a alguien a party. Fin. Adam, por favor, uh, échame una mano. Javier, gracias por el Prime. Um, uh, for this specific season, uh, really the, be the best way of grabbing Uber Unix is through the boss ladder for sure, through uh, Uber Durial. El Bárbaro es la hostia. More, uh, you know, you can of course find Uber Unix any time throughout the game. It's just there are higher chances through uh, Uber Durial, uh, and that is still the same specifically for this season. And then of course now more opportunities to go into that fight now since we've like amped up a lot of the. Uh, Dice, the tema de los Uber únicos. ¿Qué pasa con los Uber únicos? Uh, like se mantiene, si sí, Uber Durial se mantiene igual, todo uh, igual. Nice, uh, no vais a tener el doble drop que tuvisteis three, durante el evento so de Navidad. Kind of into, uh, Pero al estar la marea infernal permanente, puedes estar entrando uh, sin parar Uber Durial. El farmeo de Uber Durial va a ser más rápido y más fácil. Uh, from from players uh, asking like, hey, is there any update of like, are you guys planning on actually uh, uh, increasing the field of view? Uh, right now we don't have any plans. Uh, eh, pregunta muy básica. That, ¿Me vas a incrementar el tamaño de la zona que veo? Players. No. Uh, there's a lot of work that of course has to go into something like that. Respuesta simple. Um, so, no. You know, we'll, we'll, if whenever we do have an update, we'll we'll make sure to actually provide that specifically on that end. Uh, codex updates is another big thing because people have been asking about you know, the codex updates. Uh, I'm just like kind of shotgunning. Uh, I'm seeing like <laughs> words El codex. here in chat. I'm like, oh yeah. Hay algún tipo de upgrade um, mejor al codex que podamos utilizar porque el sistema legendario que ahora mismo es, es basura. Uh, and that will also be part of a future season. Uh, sí, pero va a ser el cambio que vais a tener en la season 4 con el tema de los ítems. Todavía no. Streams, Por ahora no. Uh, kind of helping out with inventory, yep. uh, making sure the the those specific uh, aspects were like pulled out of inventory and kind of stored uh, within within the character or cataloged within the character. So uh, we will have more uh, info on when that actually ends up hitting soon. Um, but there's a ton of things that are coming to uh, D4 to, to help address a lot of some of this community feedback specifically on that end. And then um, question regarding Gauntlet. Uh, this is from Uh, RM Dragonheart, uh, will you be able to inspect the top players in Gauntlet and see what builds they're potentially using? Podremos ver las builds de los jugadores de Gauntlet. To inspect the top players from Gauntlet, there will be a link from the leaderboard to a player's profile, um, and you'll be able to see what they're playing currently. Sí. Uh, but we do not save a snapshot right now of what they. No va a haber un snapshot. No puedes capturar awesome. con so, yeah, qué rankearon kind of like, pero va a haber un link uh, a su perfil you know, en vivo and stuff like that. You have the algo es algo it does, if they to their build ¿Qué or está like that, utilizando el top de mi clase algo así from that end. Um, and then uh, I know uh, we've gotten or this was a question from Max gusta. TV regarding Malthus um, do we have any plans of Malthus becoming maybe potentially an end game boss outside of the season um, ¿Sabes uh, si Malthus se va a quedar cuando termine la season? 
introducing it in like a boss ladder in the in the future? Right. So every season, you know, uh, much as Adam described for power, you know, we take a look at those elements that we really liked from a, a previous season to see if we can bring them forward. Um, certainly, people. Uh, on the team like fighting Malthus. Hopefully you all enjoy fighting Malthus too. Uh, if you like fighting him enough, then perhaps in the future, yeah. We si os gusta lo suficiente la pelea que hemos diseñado de Malthus o de Malthus, es muy probable que sí. Por ahora no podemos decir que sí, pero si os gusta lo suficiente y un buen feedback, es posible que sí. A little over beyond. We were aiming for for 90 minutes. We're a little beyond. It's yeah. totally fine, though. Um, so really appreciate. Stuff. Yeah, a lot of stuff in season three. Really appreciate everyone uh, providing uh, questions. And if you have additional questions, of course, um, make sure to ch ask them over social media, Reddit, forums. We're always checking those out. And of course, we'll we'll try to address them in either future streams or immediately if we can uh, after the stream. Again, patch notes for season three. And the new the new uh, 1.3 patch are going to be hitting tomorrow. Las so notas sure del patch salen mañana con todos los detalles, los únicos, todo. Um, it's a it's a big one. Always a bit. Son always largos. Big patch notes uh, when you start off a new season specifically. Um, and you know we have a lot of of other activities that are going on within the Diablo universe. Diablo 3 started their new season uh, just a couple weeks ago. Uh, D2. Uh, Repping D2 today. There we go. D2R. Um, uh, D2, I know we've gotten a lot of questions about when the next ladder will be. Uh, we'll have more news on that in February. We don't expect it to, uh, a ladder reset to happen until February, but we'll give you a specific date uh, as we get closer to February. Of course, DI has a ton of new updates as well. They had a big, big update before the holiday regarding uh, familiars being added to the game, and they've been Va a haber nuevo ladder that. con Diablo um, so 2 también en febrero. Stuff coming to uh, to the Diablo universe. D4, even earlier this month, we, we, we uh, talked about how uh, we will have uh, ray tracing and uh, a lot of those. Viene la incorporación del ray tracing para poder ver reflejos en agua, habilidades, etc. Que viene a Diablo 4 el ray tracing. A future update really, really soon, so I'm, I'm super excited for that, those mm -hmm. items. Um, but lots of stuff within the Diablo universe, and of course, uh, uh, season three hitting on January 23rd. Um, I just want to thank, you know, Madeline, Dan, Adam Jackson from Irvine. Uh, I'm looking forward to uh, flying back and saying hi again, Adam. But, uh, <laughs> I want to thank you guys for, for, of course, joining us on uh, this special uh, developer update live stream for season three. Um, and just a heads up for, for people that are, are watching, uh, we, uh, our friends at Xbox, uh, are actually doing an Xbox Developer Direct uh, that's going to be starting here really soon. Uh, so make sure to check that out on their, the Xbox channel on Twitch and on YouTube. And of course, uh, we'll be raiding into some of our, our wonderful Diablo partners on YouTube and Twitch. So uh, make sure to tune into them immediately after the stream. Uh, but thank you guys again for, yeah. for tuning in for the developer update uh, for Season the Construct, which is launching on January 23rd. Patch notes tomorrow on Diablo4.com. And yeah, thank you guys from Albany. Really appreciate right. it. Thank See you guys in game. Hola, a disfrutar, amigo. Bien, interesante. Bastante interesante. Gracias, gracias, señor de la red. 7000 espectadores en una presentación de una season. Uf, son poquitos, eh. A ver, habrá muchos que, como yo, lo estén co-streameando, pero. Me parece poco. Bueno, es lo que hay.